Super Yakko Oval live grand final day. Good afternoon to you. The umpires for the match, Phil O'Reilly and Grant Vernon, flanked by the boundary umpires for this game. And the scene is set for what should be a magnificent grand final to wind up the season. Earlier today, West Perth won the under-19s grand final against Claremont. Claremont won the reserves grand final against South Fremantle. We've seen a very colourful and spectacular opening to... Uh, this grand final today, Claremont are already out on the ground. You can see them there, intermingled with um, youngsters and of course the uh, choir which is preparing for the national anthem and also some little leaguers. We've see just seen a very colourful display by the skydivers and also uh, from a Pepsi dancing team which uh, certainly has a big crowd of about 20 to 25,000 uh, thoroughly entertained. We're still waiting for Swan Districts to appear for this uh, grand final. During the course of the year, the sides have met on four occasions. Swans have won three, Claremont have won one, and that was in the second semi-final. Over recent years, the grand finals have been one-sided, lopsided affairs, and uh, judging by the games we've seen so far this season, this grand final could be a lot closer than in previous years. Swans are going for a hat-trick of wins in grand finals over Claremont. They defeated the Tigers in 1982 and 1983, so they're going for a hat-trick of wins against this Claremont side. But by the same token, Claremont, including 1981, have appear are now appearing in their seventh grand final. They've won two in 90 1987 and 1989. They've won three and lost three since 1981. So their record in grand finals really has been outstanding. The Tigers also going for back-to-back -back premierships, having thrashed South Fremantle last year by a margin of 67 points. Well, the choir preparing for the playing of the national anthem as we welcome Keith Slater, Wally Foreman and Ken Casellas to our commentary. Thank you, Trevor. Corpus Christi choir there. And uh, the game's set up for a real good contest. And what's some contests we've seen this year between these two sides? 15 points, the biggest winning margin. And, of course, the second semi-final played in, uh, in Clement. Weather conditions, but they're producing another very tight finish with Swans going down by seven points. Keith, with the weather, what do you think might happen today? The forecast is for showers. So far, they've held off, thankfully, although people in the country will be waiting for some rain. That could happen tonight, according to the Weather Bureau. Well, I haven't got my crystal ball, Trev, but uh, I, my tip is that the rain will stay away until this evening. Uh, there's a blustery uh, easterly breeze been blowing here for the greater part. Now, if the rain is coming th this evening, I've got a feeling that the wind will switch from the southwest late in the game, and that could be quite significant. Well, it's important. Yes, um, those flags on the scoreboard certainly have uh, fluctuated, and... Uh, at the moment, that breeze, I think, trying to come in from a northwesterly direction, yeah. which would bring the rain. But let's hope that uh, it does stay off until after 5 o'clock today. Rain doesn't seem to play a big part in games at Subiaco Oval anymore because of the big grandstands. The wind, you mean, Keith? The, the wind, yeah. yeah. In the, in coming from the, the, the big grandstands guarding the northwestern corner of the ground. And, uh, I mean, even if you're kicking, if the wind is blowing to that Perth end, you can still kick goals from this at this uh, Fremantle end because the, uh, the ground is so guarded. But... Uh, Gee, you know, when you look at the Claremont side and the Swan side, we'll discuss that in a minute. Yes, uh, we'll have a look at those two teams that are taking part today, Walt, and uh, a couple of surprises. Yes, there are a couple of surprises. Let's have a look firstly at the Claremont side. This is fairly predictable. The main change, of course, is Burton back onto the half-back line in place of Begovic, who was recalled to the Eagles during the course of the week and acquitted himself very well yesterday. There will be some uh, discussion, I would think, as to how we've placed their forward line, but that's pretty much how it started in the first semi, in the second semi-final, with both Mann and O'Connell on the half-forward line, giving Todd something to think about as to how he uses his taller players. Um, but it, it may well not line up that way, and certainly if it rains, I would think that O'Connell would spend a fair amount of time on the interchange bench. But a fairly predictable lineup there, and there's uh, a tailless tiger. The uh, Swan District's mascot got hold of it very early in the preliminaries this afternoon. Got a tiger by the tail. Wall. He had a tig tiger by the tail. There you see the Swan. Let's have a look at the Swan District side, and this is where there is a surprise. You can't see the name there, but Brent Hutton will play this afternoon. He is going to start on the interchange bench, we believe, and he has replaced Steve Bazo who has been a member of this league side for most of the year and because of indifferent form in recent weeks finds himself on the outer for the grand final. That's the significant change as far as Swan Districts are concerned. Well, if I can butt in there, the Brent Hutton will wear Brad Shine's number two jumper. They can't get Brad Shine's body on the ground, but they're going to get his number on the ground. OK, so that will be of interest uh, also. 
as uh, the Claremont side continues to go through its preliminaries. There's the 5th Military District Brass Band. But the Claremont side has been out there for a long time, and there's the blustery Norwester, as Keith said. The uh, ground is pretty well protected from this Norwester. Obviously, the top of the scoreboard isn't, but it shouldn't have any great effect on goal-scoring potential at the western end of the ground. But Swans haven't come out, and this is interesting, Keith, as, a, as an experienced grand finalist. What, uh, what goes through the minds of the respective teams in this situation? One team's been out there a long time now. The other team hasn't come out for some time. Well, I think the coach in the room has got to work out when is the best time to send his charges onto the ground. In fact, they're going to play the national anthem without Swan Districts out there. No, they're not. Yeah, I, well, I, that I, would have been interesting if they'd done that. Yes, yeah, but I think while... Uh, it's one of the decisions that a coach has got to make. If his side is ready to go out on the ground, then he will send them out. I doubt very much whether John Todd will even know that Claremont are out there. He might, but he's obviously not ready to send his side out yet, and that's the reason he hasn't sent them out. But uh, it's very much an on-spot decision by the coach. So I don't think it's pre-planned, and uh, his players might be uh, ready, getting jittery. Better for them to get out there and get the feel of it. According to Casella's mean time, it is only quarter past two at the moment, and the game's not due to start for another five minutes, so maybe... Jared Neesham has erred a little in bringing them out this early. Well, not necessarily. Uh, he might have had his players ready to go out in the ground. Far better for them to get out there and run around and let off a bit of steam than sit in the room stewing. And here they come the now, game. Keith. Well, here, come the, here come the black and whites. It's a mixed crowd, too. A very mixed perception so far. Well, Claremont got a few hoots when they went past that three-tier stand. Yeah, it sounds like a Swans house, Keith. Some Brad grim Shine. faces. Brad Shine leading them out, but I don't think he's playing. Brad Shine and uh, Peter Hodel is the coach. He's been through this a few times. And so is Jared Neesham now, for that matter. Last out the Sandover medalist, Mick Grasso. They'll be hoping for more from him today in this grand final as finally Swans make their appearance. Trev, we're going to have to keep a close eye on this Swan District side, just see how many players are out there, because the 20 that I was given by Swan Districts did not include Brad Shine and did include Brent Hutton. So we'll just have to see if that, in fact, was... Uh, uh, was an untruthful state statement, I guess. Well, they uh, have been known to play ducks and drakes before in grand finals, and no. in particular, John Todd. Would you expect Brad to play in this game, uh, no, Keith? No, no, I'm sure he won't play. I'm sure that Brent Hutton will play. Well, I it's can't a, see Hutton. Hutton's there. He's right in the middle of the group. Yeah. So this is a, uh, obviously... Shine is uh, the captain of the side. Yes, and, 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 and John acknowledgement Todd, uh, of his value to the club. Yeah, but apparently plays an enormous part at the club, not on the field, but around the place. And John Todd wants to recognise that. And I think the players insisted on that also. And I've got a feeling that Brad Shine will, in fact, make the toss. Mm, that's good. That's great, isn't it? It's, uh, I mean, we would assume that this is his last season. He's been a very loyal and effective servant for Swan Districts and a great footballer. Simpson medalist in a grand final. Renowned for his courage and his resilience. In fact, two Simpson medalists involved in this game today. Peter Thorne, who won the Simpson medal in 1987. There's Brett Hutton in the middle of that pack alongside uh, David Ogg and Mick Grasso. And, of course, the runner for Swan Districts, Graham Melrose, won a Simpson medal for Swans in 1982 in that uh, tremendous period, Keith, 82, 83, 84, when Swans won consecutive grand finals against Claremont twice and East Fremantle. Mick Grasso there, Brent Hutton, Peter Hodel, very important player in this game today, as is number 19, Paul Gower. Can, Can he, he do it build? again? Can he do it again? Well, he's been su the surprise factor of the final so far. The big difference Ken Bell. between the sides, Trev, the way I see it, is that Claremont have a very settled side, and Swans have come through with several players who have played most of the season in the reserves. If you look down through Swans' list, you, you notice that the players like uh, Jeff Passiri, Greg Walker, Ken Bell, and to a lesser extent, Sean Davies, Stephen Eaton, have all played a lot of games in reserves football this year, and they really have been prime movers in Swan's charge towards this grand final. Can they repeat the performance again? Well, we're going to find out in a little while, but uh, Claremont, a very settled side. I'd say Swan's a very fit side indeed. In fact, they've been coming home at the rate of knots in all their games recently, and one would expect them to do that again today. <coughs> Well, the weather forecast has uh, just come off hot off the press. A uh, cloud increasing as the day continues, and around about 4 o'clock, they're expecting the initial part of the front to go through, so there may be some shower activity. But uh, more importantly, those winds, north by northwest, which would be a good title for a movie. And they're increasing. They're at 40 kilometres per hour at the moment. 
and increasing as the afternoon goes on. So the toss, Keith, is going to be important in of one hand by the fact that uh, they'll have use of the breeze, but if those showers arrive at 4 o'clock, that could nullify the use of the breeze. Well, I know Swans are very keen to be in front early, and uh, they're anticipating rain, and because of that, the goals early in the game could play a very major part. Ken Casillas, statistically, who can win this match today? Well, Swan Districts have got a better record uh, over Claremont than Claremont have over Swans in final round matches, but Claremont have won 107, Swans 66 and one draw out of the 174 clashes between the sides. Swan Districts can lay claim to being the fittest side in the competition this season. They've scored more goals and more points and had more scoring shots in the second half of football this year than any other club in the competition. 196 goals, 205 behinds. That's a total of 401 scoring shots in the second half of football this year. Claremont is the second with 345 scoring yeah. shots in the second half. Big difference. Those uh, statistics from Ken Casillas, who once again will be uh, penciling as we go through the course of the day. Stand by. We're about to have the national anthem. traditional roar at the end of the national anthem up go the balloons from Swans and Claremont and a very colorful scene here at, at, at the Subiaco Oval League headquarters the toss is about to take part and Fred Shine Shine will be tossing the coin so will he line up for Swans today with Mark Han of course the mixed emotions there for Brad Shine, wouldn't there? Tossing in a grand final and then probably going to have to leave the ground. I think that would be some sort of a record. I don't think that's ever happened before. Not in my time anyway. Mark Hand looks pretty confident. Very important for both sides, this one. The governor, Sir Francis Burt, tossing the coin. Hand's won it. I'd say Hand has won it and is kicking with the breeze. And that is a very big advantage, in my opinion, in this game. Will be if it rains. Well, I still later. feel that Swans needed to get the jump. Well, they can do that. You can score goals at this end of the ground, Trevor. Teams have shown that over the years now. Yes, it's, unusual. Unusual. That. it's unusual for Swans to start well. I mean, they're a bit like the Eagles, aren't they? Yeah. Of late, they, yeah. they sort of come home with a wet sail. But uh, well, the, I... the Eagles changed all that yesterday. And uh, I know Swans are, are very keen to do that today. Keith, I think those figures that Ken Casellas has just given us are very, very interesting and perhaps even very significant because we've seen Swans come from behind. They haven't won all the games that they've come from behind in, but that game at South Fremantle where they stormed home, the game at Claremont Oval they stormed home, the second semi-final they stormed home, and perhaps that does indicate uh, a, a higher fitness level uh, in this team than in most others. Well, it's very interesting because according to uh, my reports, Claremont, uh, uh, their training is all about skill level and the real fitness is left to the players themselves. Well, here's, here's an extension of those figures too, Keith, that Ken has just come up with. Swan Districts have outscored their opponents 17 times in 23 games in the second half so far this season. So that, uh, that will stand them in pretty good stead as long as the weather stays fine for them. It's obviously harder to kick a lot of goals if it gets wet and slippery. But By the same token, while Claremont are a very cocky side when they get their tails up and get in front. Well, we've seen them throw a couple away. You know that one at East Fremantle, or, the, or South Fremantle, wasn't it, where they were a mile in front and, uh, and uh, got swamped and then... Was that a wet day? It was, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then, well, they kicked themselves I think, out. I think for sure, Keith, both sides are better in fine conditions. No doubt about that, and we saw that in the second semi-final where we saw one of the worst games of football we've seen all season. But then again, it was close again with Swan storming home when the weather fined up. But, of course, uh, coming home late and hard in a grand final is Fitzgerald going off the ground, I think. Is that right? Yes, That's right. And Beresford. Uh, Beresford. Yep. Well, it's very hard sometimes to come home in a grand final because it could be pretty hectic for a start, and you can be pretty tired and sore and sorry coming into that last quarter. And if you're four or five goals behind, it really takes a Herculean effort to come through. Trev, I think what we're suggesting here is that no one's really sure who's going to win this game. No, you're right. <laughs> the game up for grabs. Well, the average margin between the two sides this season has been eight points. So that uh, does give uh, thought that this game could be a close one. 
And already I've made mention of the fact that since 1986, grand finals really have been lopsided, Ken Casellas, haven't they? Yes, they Through have. some massive margins. Yes, particularly last year when most people thought that the Claremont South Fremantle grand final would be a close one and Claremont ran right away with it and South finished up scoring only five goals in the grand final. Higgins explaining what is going to happen at the centre bounce. That's of course if he wins a couple of knocks. I suppose a key player for Swan Districts is Shane Stremple. Well, we saw him have enormous opportunities last week, dropped a lot of marks, missed a lot of goals. Now for our viewers who are interested in the rugby league, the rugby has restarted. Penrith and Canberra will be keeping you fully informed uh, during the course of the opening moments of this grand final. Well, there's the huddle from Swans. Very closely knit unit. Claremont already looking for their positions on the field after having won the toss and kicking to the left-hand side of your screen. There's a man on a mission today, Peter Higgins. They'll need a big game from him. Uh, he was nullified to some extent by Ken Bell in the last qualifying game of the year, as were his co-ruckmen in Fitzgerald and uh, David O'Connell. Well, he's got to do a lot more to convince me that he's a better player than Fitzgerald or O'Connell or Turnbull, for that matter. It's and uh, I've not seen him put in many good games. Walker's Peter going Higgins. off the ground. Heavens above. That does surprise me. Bazo going off. Yeah, well, Bazo's not in the 20, as we understand it. Hutton. Edmonds is going off. Shine is going off. I'd say it's Hutton and, Hutton. and Water, Walker on the interchange. You're right. <clears throat> well, John Todd sending them all out. And uh, he did that in a previous grand final. Yeah, he he did. Here. But, Keith, what do you think about Walker off the ground? Well, I suppose uh, in the pre-match planning, he isn't on the ground for a starter. And that's what happens while you, you man up and you pre-match, that you plan the match and, uh, and the Walker not out there. I think he's the best rover, actual rover in the state. That's my opinion of Walker. I think he reads the ball better off hands and, uh, than anyone I know. There's Brad Shine's jumper going on, Brent Hutton. You were right there, Keith. You yep. must be close to the camp. The grand final for 1990, Claremont versus Swan Districts. Umpire Vernon gets the game underway. Bell wins the first tap, sharp by Rowland, was he held, not according to the umpire, another chance for Rowland who tried to push it through the congestion, Grasso runs onto it, couldn't control it, it was a fickle bounce, back he comes, pushing towards the boundary, scrambles a kick towards the member's wing, Davies the first to arrive, bundled out of it though by Mann, now he looks to be at centre half back, the kick by Mann to centre half forward, up goes Bell, spoilt by Eaton, at the back it's Evans who got a hand pass to no man's land, taken by Bell, who boots it back to the middle of the ground and Mark Hand in the way, spills the mark. A little bit of grand final tension here. There is. Roland pushed, I don't know, uh, not according to umpire O'Reilly. Very scrambly just outside the circle. Holmes going in, no narco it is. With him is Pike and the umpire now finally will bounce it up. Some Good umpiring, out there. Some, some nerves out there, I can tell you. Good umpiring, he could have fallen for that uh, Roland free fall, but didn't. As Bell gets the ball down to the bottom of the pack. Chance now for Andy Holmes. Good hand pass to Wog. Here goes Swans inside 50 metres. The target is Strample. Owens will take the mark. Confidence builder for him. Lewis is wide on the opposite side of the ground. And here go Claremont. They've got players ahead of the play. Roland is loose. That's where it should, get, should go. He's on the yeah, half forward line. Ledger. He's run hard, Roland, to get to this ball. And it's run away from him. Poor disposal by Cam Lewis. Well, Lewis has run about uh, 20 metres. He should have got the ball more quickly. He hung onto the ball too long. He had Roland free. He, Roland had moved well. He should have got onto, onto him quickly. Boundary throw in at right half forward for Claremont. 18 is Bell, 25 is Mann. Bell to the side of the pack was a good knock. Grasso hurriedly back towards the centre, centre wing position. Holmes and hand there. In comes Don Holmes. He went without it. Han has it. Is dispossessed oh, by Holmes. Played. That was well played by Don Holmes. Terrible kick. Well taken, though, by Menegola. Off it goes to Don Holmes, who started well. Short kick looking for Strempel is a beauty, and Strempel will shoot from 50 metres. That wasn't such a bad kick, Wally. He had to get it to Menegola, and uh, along the ground, not all that bad to a clever player like Menegola. He knew what he was doing because he followed his own play up and finished it off beautifully. Now, Strempel, with a light, well, not a light, with a northwesterly breeze to contend with, gets just inside 50. It's a good kick. It's the first goal of the game to Swans. Strempel opens the scoring in the 1990 Grand Final. Swans are one goal straight. Claremont are yet to score. Well, that's a bit of a change from last week. We saw Strempel drop so many marks and miss so many goals, but he's taken a good pass from Don Holmes and converted into the breeze. And that's no mean feat because that ball, that kick was a good 45 metres out and it went through halfway up the post. So a good attacking move by Swan Districts. Don Holmes is obviously very fired up and he's been in the play strongly. Very experienced player, brilliant build-up, I thought. Bell wins a tap, down to Holmes again. Kick smothered by Rowland, he's in the thick of things. Kicked away now by Miles, towards half-forward. 
Retzlaff out there with Evans. Retzlaff the first to arrive. Also guard lending support. Pushed up field towards Grasso. But it beats him over the line and out of bounds. Gee, Bell started well again, hasn't he? He's won the first four ruck knockouts. Yeah, he's really timing the ball beautifully. Swans one straight goal. Clermont yet to score, going with the breeze. It's Bell and Higgins. Higgins works his way to the front. Slaps it straight down to guard. Good ruck play. Hand pass in field. This is Cormac now. Danger man. Gets around Gandini. He kicks towards full forward. Chance here for Claremont. David O'Connell underneath the football. He was pushed according to umpire O'Reilly. It did look that way. Nothing visible from here. We might have another look well, at it in a minute. It certainly looked as if he was pushed. Yeah, well, you had have a look at it. on it, so you had a better view than I did. But uh, it was a good knock by Peter Higgins, I thought, down to Cormac. And Cormac played it very well. So O'Connell, you haven't got a replay of it. Shooting from 30 metres, drop punts a beauty. Straight through the middle. Tit for tat in the opening minutes of the grand final. Both sides of one goal straight after four minutes. Well, we're just talking about how well Bell was rucking, but on that boundary throw in, Higgins got a superb knock to guard. It spilled out towards uh, Cormac. He and knocked it so hard to guard, Keith Guard couldn't control it. Yeah, but he didn't Cormac play it well. He could have blasted away, but he took time out and uh, sent it the ball beautifully, and uh, he put it into a scoring position. Number 18 is Ken Bell. Number 19 for Claremont is Peter Higgins. Interesting changes in defence for Claremont. Scott goes back to Strempel. And Owens comes out as a spare man on the half-back line. Now, that puts Scott under enormous pressure. A much taller player playing on him. A chance for Claremont to go forward. It's knocked away by, from Rowland. And the Claremont player held in there was Thorne. It was Cormac, I'm sorry. No. Started well, Keith. Yep. Oh, he's a class rover, Joe Cormac. The lead is from Hutton. It's been ignored. Han is loose on the outer wing. That's terrible checking by Andy Holmes. And that would probably be Holmes' weakness as a wingman, would be his defensive work. Played very effectively out there last week. No one wants to go to Roland. He can shoot from there. He will almost get the distance. O'Connell pushed his opponent in the back. And well, it went unpenalised. Well, that was a blatant nudge forward. I mean, you can't say it was anything else. And clear view from here. I didn't see the other one, but Trevor had the glasses on it and said the push was there from Hethington. Now, Og makes the break towards the member's side of the ground. Cormac can't get Oof, to him. Evans and Cormac dealt out a little bit of treatment there. And they're lucky they didn't give away 50 metres. Pretty gentle start, really, for a grand final. It is, isn't it? So Og's kicked towards the member's flank. Bell's in this, and it's uh, Bell who takes the mark. In fact, uh, he's played a push here. And it'll be Thorne, I think, or no, Miles with the free kick. Well, again, I missed that. It certainly wasn't a push from Bell. There's the kick from Miles towards full forward. O'Connell at the back. Hetherington got a hand to it. The crumbs come to guard. Hand passes out in front of Cormac. Grasso intercepts off the boot of Grasso and a force behind. Very well played by Mick Grasso. Where'd he come from? Well, they should have done better, though, shouldn't they, Keith? Three to one, they had him. He did do a great job, but they're outnumbered three to one, Swans, and they got out of it. Hetherington puts it back into play, finds the experienced Langsford, hand pass to Grasso. He started with a lot more confidence, and the kick finds Retzler short of half back. More comfortable back there in defence, Grasso, I think. No one on the mark as Langsford plays on. Oh, sorry, Retzler plays on and kicks back towards centre half forward. That's a good kick, but straight to Owens. Narkel did beautifully. Knocks it wide of the pack where it's taken by Lewis. It jars free to Higgins. His kick was smothered by Bell. Mitchell is in there for Swans, and Penny is with him. And down, a player down behind play. That was Narkel, and uh, and he's in trouble, whoever that player is. It looks to be Hodel. Hodel. Yes. I think he was caught under that uh, situation with uh, with Owens and uh, Narkel. Here it is again. No, I don't think so. We're playing no, on. All right. This is Davey. Kept the ball in. Goes down towards half forward to Menegola. Too slippery for Burton. Good kick. Brilliant kick. Scott's in trouble. He's not had a good second half of the season. And I doubt the wisdom of this move. Oh, I can't do anything about that, Wall. Absolutely impossible for Scott to do anything about that. Perfect passes coming in for Strempel. The difference today is that Strempel's hanging on to them. Well, here he is shooting from 30 metres an acute angle. It's a good kick, but he, I think he's pushed it too far across the face. And a point results. 1-1 to 1-2, Claremont Lee. In the Rugby League Grand Final, Canberra 12, Penrith 10. Canberra lead by two points. Canberra 12, Penrith 10 in the Rugby League Grand Final in Sydney. Scott puts it back into play. The target is Evans. Whoops. He's ahead of Ratzlaff. He touched it just inside the line. And it'll be a boundary throw in at left half forward for Swans. Interesting that Langsford has picked up Thorne. It's starting to pan out now. And then he's playing in the centre on Roland. Higgins too tall for Davey, but did he give away a kick? Yes, he did. 
and Gao has picked up man. We'll watch that contest because that'll be a beauty. Leads from Scrample. He's behind. Oh, up he goes. In front of him was Burton. He's got the crumb, Scrample. He's not a good snapshot as a rule. That falls short and lands with Daryl Panizza. Now they can play on quickly here, Claremont, because Roland has made the break across to the members' side of the ground. He needs it to sit and he needs assistance from Lewis. Drew the player, puts it out in front of Han, who's come across from the opposite wing, and he's causing problems for Andy, for Andy Holmes at the moment. The kick goes in towards full forward, and Mitchell, oh, heavens above. Got a beauty behind the ear. He must get the kick. That was a beautiful mark by Mitchell. It was. It was courageous. Super courageous yeah, mark. Personified, wasn't he it? He knew it was coming, too. Don't worry about that. So Mitchell will shoot from... He's got the Norwester at his back. He'll shoot from just inside 50. There's the mark again, and he got a beauty from Eaton. The kick goes towards goal. Oh, what a oh. kick from Mitchell. Telling kick in the grand final. That would be a lifting goal, I would think. As Claremont get their second, their 2-2, Swans a 1-1. Yeah, but not a, not a lot of knuckle men out there. This is the start of Claremont going forward. That's a lovely kick. Mitchell had to stand his ground. That was The traffic was coming from behind. Never took his eye off it at any stage. But I think this is going to be a very skilled game of football because when you look around, no knuckle men out there. They're, they're ball players, and this could be a very high-standard game of footy. Yes, Mitchell rolled by the penny there. There's the scoreline. Seven points to difference. Awkward bounce, though. Higgins tried to take possession. Crumbs come down towards Claremont Evans. He got one over the shoulder, according to umpire Vernon. The umpires are playing the man, playing the ball. That's a good tactic. Left foot drop, punt the centre half forward. Gao trying to work his way to the front. Fisted away oh. by man. The crummer is thorn. His shot on goal clears Eaton and bounces the wrong side. One behind. It's been a high standard game so far. Well, he should have done better then, Thorne. He, he changed his mind. He initially was going to pass the ball, and then at the last moment he gave it a bit more. If he had made up his mind to shoot a goal, I reckon he would have put that through. Eight points in favour of Claremont. Kick back into play. Oh. Clears Holmes. Free kick for Claremont. To be taken by Joey Cormack, number four. That's a very dangerous thing to do when a side is kicking with the breeze, as Claremont is. Ten minutes have gone. Look at the pass. Evans is on the end of it. In front of Retzlaff. He's outside 50. He's got a lead from O'Connell in the pocket. Oh. It carries him. Hetherington should have done better. He's tackled by man. He was tackled high, according to O'Reilly. And the advantage rule paid now for Hetherington. He gets it out wide, and Passiri takes the mark in front of Pike. Now, these two wingmen have barely been sighted. I reckon Hetherington gave uh, his man a nice little nudge in the back that last contest. There's Mitchell. He's won the ball again. Gets around Passiri. This is danger for Swans. In towards full forward. A Swans defender got his hand to it, but it's with man. Back on goal, but offline, well offline, and out of play on the full. Well, the Swans defender, I think it was Grasso, was going to take the chess mark, and Bell came in with a big fist and nearly set it up for Claremont. Well, Og was unchecked, but Hetherington is being told that he must kick over the mark. Unchecked? He's about 50 metres unchecked, isn't he? He's still unchecked, and but I think Claremont have decided that he can't kick it to him because he won't be going over the mark. <laughs> Short kick in, and that should never have been allowed by the Claremont forwards. Retzlaff taking an uncontested mark. They had ample time Correct. to cover the options. Now, Retzlaff relieves the pressure. He gets it up towards centre wing, and Bell is in front. Could almost have got the kick. Comes to the front of the pack, and Evans. He looks back towards half forward. Roland is unattended, and he's been a Good. dominant player in the opening minutes. How many kicks, uh, Ken? This is his fourth kick. He kicks into the man on the mark. Terrible stuff. Penny was the player who got his hand to it. And away comes Swans. The clearing kick goes towards centre wing. Narkel takes a good mark. He's standing Burton, or Burton is standing Narkel. It goes back towards the 50 metre line. Strempel got an unkind bounce. He had to wait for it. Gave Scott time to close on him. He ran into his own man, Strempel. Narkel knocks it back to the half forward line. Hodel close to the line. Keeps it in. Is out for nest Burton and yeah. puts the ball to the right to the unattended Holmes in the pocket. He decides to go and puts it out on the full. Yeah. Well, there was no one in the square. That's why he went, but he would have been better advised, I think, to have gone back and had a kick. Yes, but they won the same take, and he's a great snapshot in that situation, but that wasn't one of his best. His worst, in fact. Scott's got it now. Goes for a gallop across the full back line. Scott clears, and that's a good kick, too, to find the skipper, Mark Hand. Andy Holmes couldn't get back to cover him in time. A kick up field finds Peter Thorne, who marks in front of the old scoreboard. Hand he's is still running. And Holmes, Holmes is Andy 50 Holmes. metres behind him. OK, Hand has kicked towards centre-half forward. Out comes Hutton. Oh, is he jumping it long enough? Yep. Yes. I think Handy Holmes will be off in a moment. Gee, that's loose. Toddy wouldn't put up with that for long, I don't think. Those two players are covering a lot of ground. This is the mark, Keith. Yeah, yeah I pay that. He got it a second time. He had that long enough for mine. And he can kick the footy. Good mark under pressure. Eaton wearing him like another skin. There's Greg Walker coming down. 
And I wouldn't be surprised if it was Andy Holmes. 50 metres out, John Hutton. Claremont Sneak shoots on goal. It's long and strong, but it's offline. One behind only. Had plenty of distance there. Well, that was a good indication of the breeze. Yes. It really carried that ball, and it went uh, well and truly over the top of the goalpost. Grasso puts it back into play. Nine points the difference in favour of the Tigers. Well, Swans have got the numbers up on centre wing. If they can get it up there, where Menengola and Han and Holmes are opposed. Play on is the call. It goes back looking for Og, and up goes Roland to take a good mark. Poor disposal by Swans coming yep. out of defence. Og should have done better. There's Miles coming down from the half-back line. They've gained little from that. He tries to get around Og. That's a telling kick going in towards the pocket. O'Connell is there with Hetherington. Hetherington's done well. He's giving away some inches to O'Connell. Andy and Holmes, Holmes is off. Yes, he was cut to ribbons on that outer wing. His defensive work was not good. But then he's an attacking player, a reliable goal scorer. He'll go out there. Men in goal, I reckon, might go onto a wing. Let's have a look. Is Narkel shifted? Yes. Men goal has picked up hand. Grasso from fullback goes looking for Narkel. Burton got there. This is Pike who knocks it onto man. Back to Burton. Was a bit fancy, but they got away with it. Higgins has it. He sends the hand pass infield to Cormac. Got an unkind bounce, and now they're in trouble, uh, Claremont. This is Higgins again. Tried to give it to uh, to Cormac, and Higgins has been penalised for holding the ball. Swans are allowed the advantage. Penny plays on with a hand pass to Langsford. Langsford kicks it long. The target, Scrimple. Out he comes. Couldn't control that over Owens. Crumbs come down to Walker. Shrugs the tackle. Now he goes for the foot pass to Scrimple in the pocket. He's marked. 35 metres out. 60 degree angle. He is moving around Strample, well, isn't he's he? a good footballer. He's looking good today. I mean, he is reading the play beautifully. He wants that footy. Melbourne uh, will be keeping a close watch on him. I know Melbourne are very keen to pick him up. And here it is. The kick on goal is a shocker. Right across the goal square. Getting a hand to it was Burton. Trump's comes to Vasiri. He's a sharpshooter. Goes for the hand pass to Davey who snaps on goal. Strample again. No, he's given away the kick. Oh, I didn't yeah. see it. They play on with the hand well, pass. I reckon gee, I had a good look at that. Didn't look to be a lot yeah, in it. Scott under pressure. Decision. Well picked up by Han. Han's got to get around Langsford. There's some experience there. Back to no man's land. They need the boundary, Claremont. Owen struggles towards the boundary and flicks it out. And we'll have a throw in midway between right centre wing and right half forward for Swans. I don't know whether we can have a look at that other one, but really. No, we can't. Trump by Vernon. Boundary throw in. Fitzgerald is there. He's opposing Bell on this occasion. Ineffective ruck play. It comes down towards Grasso. He overran it. Picked up by Og. Gets the hand pass to Walker, who's immediately got into the game. Back they go towards Strample. Scott is there. He was oh. holding on to Strample was holding oh, on to that's Scott. Ridiculous. Blatantly. Oh, heavens above. Taken by Menengola. Intercepted by Lewis, who was tripped. That and is, he'll get the free that kick. That is disgusting umpiring. That really is disgusting umpiring. I'm sorry to get onto an umpire, but the Scott was the clearly stretch. held. I mean, you've just got to give a kick free kick under those circumstances short kick finds miles could he see it keith that'd be the question well you'd have to be a blind man well we've got a good view a better view than he would though well no he was square onto it Trevor. he's umpiring a grand final there goes the kick out of play on the fall from miles so there's some errors being made by all concerned at the moment and gandini will bring it back in part of the good crowd at subiaco oval up around twenty-five thousand, i would suggest congratulations to west australian football fans they've turned out for our grand final and that's great to see 2-5 plays 1-1, one, one. Claremont lead by 10, Swans into attack, the target is Scrimple again, he's sandwiched but he worked his way to the front, put in play, Fitzgerald complaining, oh, oh but Scrimple has taken it clean as a whistle mark, well, and he'll shoot on goal from 30 metres. Why wouldn't he complain of the strange decisions the umpires have been given? They're going to make the players now look around and say, well I was bumped or I was nudged. Gee. He's booted one, can he make it two? Scrimple from 30 metres out. The kick looks good. It's a goal. And this is a very entertaining first quarter. 2-5-17. Swans are 2-1-13. Four points in favour of the Tigers. What about some of the leading kick getters, Ken? Scott Rowland in the centre for Claremont's had five. Five kicks to Stremple and four marks and four kicks to Jeff Miles at centre-half back. Three to Joe Cormack and three to Tony Evans. And Mark Han on a wing for Claremont's had five kicks. Look at the stats five. on the Strimple there, I didn't get them, Ken. Four marks and five kicks in the opening uh, 16 and a half minutes of play, Keith. Incredible. 2-5 two, two to 2-1. Two Claremont lead by four points, but they have been 
wasteful with the wind in this first quarter. Good knock down to Roland. Oh, heavens above, he's gone square where Han is unattended, but they've gained little except maintaining possession. Up to the half forward line looking for man. Good mark. He just outpaced Gow. And that was a good mark taken by the Claremont centre half forward. Now he will put this well back inside 50 metres. In fact, he gets it up towards the square. O'Connell is in front and has taken the mark. Hetherington's got to play him in front, I think. Well, he's got no chance of behind unless he pushes him in the back. I'm still a little bewildered by Nisham's move back here at full back with Scott standing strample when Owens has done so well on him or did so well on him in the second semi. I reckon Claremont have got a system going out of the centre too while with Mark Han. He's leaving the centre square and disappearing out near the scoreboard. Here's the shot at goal from David O'Connell. He's kicked one so far. Oh, he's missed badly. Very badly. And if Claremont have an Achilles heel, I have suggested all season that it is their forward line. And here they are at 2-6 at the 17-minute mark of the first quarter in the grand final, leading Swans, who are 2-1. And that wind is blowing very strongly now in favour of Claremont. Good kick back into play by Eaton. Finds for Siri. He was a match winner last week. Jeff for series deep in defense kicks to the outer side of the ground Davy up punched away strongly by miles at the front of the pack though taken away by red slap his kick towards ten and a half forward Burton's there up he goes couldn't take the mark hand passed on by Panizza meant for Roland he's right in the center back it goes to Panizza hooks it across his body running onto it is Cormac he's going the wrong way hand passes back to Roland he's tackled by Holmes a short kick to centre half forward. For Siri got a hand to it. Bell tried to soccer it. Pike was there. Couldn't control it. Retzlaff gets a hand pass. Evan sharked it. Slipped. Guard's got it. Through the congestion. Guard was well played. The kick towards full forward is offline. And another behind of the Tigers. They can't find the target. They're 2 7 19. Swans are 2 1 13. 19 and a half minutes gone. Dandini's off. Yeah, if we get a look at that wind sock, it's blowing very strongly at the moment, so Claremont will need to get some goals on the board. The Bureau says it will freshen. Hetherington, up goes hand, knocked away by Retzlaff. Fitzgerald's got it, cornered by Hetherington, forced a hand pass when tackled. Play. Good hand pass by hand to Pike. He skirts around the traffic. The kick now towards full forward. It's O'Connell and Hetherington again, punched away by Hetherington. In comes Hutton, tackled by Holmes and dispossessed. Back comes O'Connell to lend support, but they overdo it. And good pick up by Hetherington. Swans out of trouble. He goes up towards the boundary line. Miles gets rid of Davy, and they'll get a throw in Swans in front of the old scoreboard. Hammond are being very wasteful at the moment. They're well, they, winning, winning midfield. There's the wind. You can see it's uh, pretty strong at the moment. They have been so dominant across the centre line that Todd has been forced to make move two of his key players. And uh, they still only lead by five, six points. That's Claremont as the ball goes towards the centre of the ground. Bad mistake by Owens. Another mistake by Holmes. But Walker's there to help him get out of trouble. He puts the ball down towards the, the half-forward line where Strempel has it. Scott has him cornered. Kicks back the vacant space for Menengola. It was good play. Miles off the ground. Gets it out of play. It was well played by Strempel. He really set it up for Swans. And the Miles anticipating very well indeed. A lot of moves being made. Grasso's in the forward line now. Throw in it right full forward for Swan District. Scott was pushed out of it by Strempel, who in turn was taken over the shoulder. But Panizza has the run of the ball. He can go a bit further if he wants to. Looks towards centre wing. Mitchell's the target, but he opted out of the contest. And Penny takes an uncontested mark. And that could well have been 50. An ungainly return to the... Nowhere near him, was it? No. So Penny... Good looking drop punt, Menegola from behind Owens. Oh yes. Had his name on it, brilliant yeah. mark. Yeah, good areas to Peter Owen. The second good mark of the match, plays it off to Pike. Narkel is out on hand now. Owens, to the run of Jeff Miles, he's got some pace through centre half back. There's the kick towards half forward, out in front of Hutton. With him is Eaton, close to the boundary line. Hutton uses uh, a hip and shoulder on Eaton, and the boundary umpire will throw it in. Terrible play by Hutton, by Miles. I mean, he's got the breeze. The ball's travelling 60 metres every time. He should have gone straight down the full forward then. Bell and Mann. Mann from behind. Bell wins the tap. Ineffective, though. Picked up by Retzlaff. Pushed off the kick by Mann. Back comes Retzlaff, though. He's a boundary rider. The kick towards the wing. Up goes Miles. Couldn't take the mark. Hoda was with him. Now Thorne a chance. Got a call from Lewis. Lewis tried to do too oh, much. Oh, in plenty of trouble. Tried to do too much. He was caught. Pushed on by Swans to Andy Holmes. Outside 50. Wobbly looking punt though to the goal square. Scott's there for Claremont in the last line. Good shepherding by Owens. Away comes Scott. Hand pass to Panizza. 
and Panizza goes inboard oh. and neat foot pass finds John Pike. Now they've gone to the wrong side of the ground unless he can kick it long. He's done that and he's found Lewis. That was dangerous. Swans oh. had equal numbers out there. He comes back into the center of the ground where Fitzgerald is unattended. Now they can go Better. and they should go straight down the center. They need a kick. Again, he wanted a second option. Terrible kick and it lands with Don Holmes. Claremont are a mess. They're not making the use of the breeze. They, they're looking for short leads when they should be pumping it long on all occasions. Well, that was another poor kick from Don Holmes. Oh. Gives Roland a chance. As uh, Walker loses possession, Grasso has it and in perm was held. In comes Don Holmes, now playing in the centre, I think. Gets it wide towards Og. And uh, Pike taking a long time to get up off the ground behind play. As Og looks back to centre half forward, it's all Swans. Menangola. Beautifully played by Og. He could have gone long, but there was nothing but Claremont in the square. And he took time out to have a look, and didn't he centre it magnificently? Peter Hodelop. Peter Hodelop, yeah. I think Holmes is in the centre now, standing Roland. He's limping too, is Hodel. Well, here's Menangola. This goal, would tie, if he kicks it, would tie it up, and that would be a great first quarter for Swans. From limited opportunities, they have tied it up. Last kick. They get their third, their 3-1. Claremont are a wasteful 2-7. Yep, and he's a class player, Menangola. I think he's destined for bigger things as Todd Menangola, and I've got a feeling that even in this game, we could see him playing at centre-half forward. He's about six foot one. He moves beautifully, and uh, he's a good kick at goal. And on that occasion, he was beautifully accommodated by David Ogg coming around this right-hand boundary line and centering the ball. That's good, classy football. You mentioned uh, Menegola. Destined for better things, David Ogg, too, I think, Keith. Set a bounce. One by Fitzgerald. Down to Roland. Again, he goes out. There's the plan to hand. He's taken the mark. Don't like it, though. It's too square. They haven't gained a lot. Hand gets around uh, Andy Holmes. Drives towards full forward. David O'Connell pushed in the back. Oh! Didn't pay it, or did he? Yes, no. he paid the advantage now. He didn't pay the free kick. Didn't pay the kick to O'Connell. And oh. Penny's kick lands with Peter Mann and, and at Peter, set a half forward. And Paul Gow would be absolutely delighted with uh, Danny Penny. I mean, he's presented Peter Mann with a goal when uh, poor old Paul Gow couldn't do anything about it. And uh, when there's such rivalry between the two. So it's Mann to shoot from 35 to 40 metres out, chips and kicks it straight. And Claremont now... Go to 3-7, Swans are 3-1, one. one straight kick the difference as we go into time on. Well, he thinks he, it's Christmas time, does Peter Mann. As you'll see, the push in the back there, not paid, that's uh, Kim Hetherington. Out goes the handball, and watch the kick by Danny Penny. Total missed kick, and Peter Mann 25 metres out right in front, and uh, that's an easy one that Swans could ill afford, and Peter Mann, of course, a lovely kick at goal. Claremont by six points, 25 minutes gone in the first quarter of the grand final. Fitzgerald on the ball for Claremont, being opposed by Bell from Swans, who wins the knock yet again. Easy. Retzlaff is in there trying to get the ball clear. Roland gets it towards centre half forward. Man comes across to meet it, trying to knock it wide to Evans. He was met pretty solidly. In goes Narkel, collides with Bell. Langsford with a hurried kick. A chance now for Fitzgerald, who did that very well, but then got in Burton's way. Davy fights tigerishly. That was brilliantly done. And on the end of it is Hutton, who's come onto the ground. Wearing number two. Hutton from about 60 metres in towards the pocket. Scott and Strempel. Strempel too easy. And Strempel can tie it up again. He's using his body magnificently, Strempel. But more importantly, he's concentrating on the ball in the air. And I'm not sure he's always done that in his career. But he's making a beeline for the ball, not worrying about whether it hits the ground or not. And he's taking some sensational marks. Here's Strempel from point-blank range. He's got his third. Swans have their fourth. 3-7 to 4-1, it's all square. And Hutton on the ground and into the game immediately, per favour of some brilliant play by Sean Davey. And, of course, Hutton setting it up nicely for Strempel. I think Peter Owen's got to get back there because John Scott really hasn't got a clue. Just not even contesting. Do you agree with Wally Foreman's comments at the last half of the season for John Scott's been a bit bleak? Yes, it has. Yeah, we've seen him play some very poor games. Swans have got a bit of a problem still with, I see Andy Holmes back on the hand on that outer wing, but I, I, I doubt, I'm a bit like you, Trev, I doubt the value of Claremont going square out there. Well, Bell and Fitzgerald, the crumbs come to Cormac. Cormac with no options. He's run oh, to. He's yeah, 25 yeah. metres the wrong way. Then gave it to Miles. Claremont had rattled. Grasso into the back of guard. Mitchell across the front of the pack. Got it just inside the boundary. The hand pass was astray. And there'll be a boundary throw in at right half forward, but well, they're very indecisive the at the moment. The umpire actually had a measuring stick there because he was almost back to the 50-metre line. <laughs> he ran a long way. 
He ran too far. I mean, it was just simple as that. Man pushes oh, Bell in the back, then oh, knocks it damn. upfield. No free kick for that. Grasso first to arrive. Hetherington goes to the ground. Gow goes in hard. Man a socket kick. Crumbs come to guard. Dispossessed by Gow. They wrestle for it. Inside set a half forward. And that'll be another bounce down. So it's a little bit willing. One wonders how they pick the umpires, whether it's on form or what. Very disappointed with the umpiring this first quarter. Up goes oh, David O'Connell, wins the tap, brings it down for guard, he got a fickle bounce. Thorne's got it in the right full forward pocket. That's a snap that they'll remember for a long time at Claremont. That's a beauty. A brilliant snap. Right full forward pocket, Peter Thorne, that little tiger uh, signals what the kick was like, Keith. Yes, yeah, so that was a great goal. And Claremont needed it because we're in well into the time on period now. And Claremont really have made a mess of using this uh, breeze. There's David O'Connell. He knew what he was doing there. He got it out the guard, but the fumble was on. Peter Thorne under pressure on his wrong foot. He's a left footer, remember. And he knows where the goals are. So he's being shadowed very, cl very closely by Don Langsford, but just getting away on that occasion. A one-hander, if you like. Bell, another decisive ruck knock, but coming through his pike. Threw it across to Roland. Roland to, hand, to Cormac. Cormac from out of the centre square puts it out very wide. O'Connell leads in the race for the ball. In fact, Thorne got there first. They have possession. He looks back to centre half forward to Evans. Evans did well to trap it. It was a difficult ball. Eludes the oncoming player. This is Roland back towards the goal square. Hutton is back there with oh. Eaton. O'Connell couldn't mark. He needs it off the ground. Wasn't able to soccer it. Hutton gets it over the line. And Claremont are indecisive back there. That's a couple of occasions. Guard was involved in a previous one where they had the chance to get the ball off the ground and they just weren't able to do it. Brilliantly played by Kim Hetherington though, Walt. He was super desperate. Hetherington kicks it in short, finds Langsford. Gow wants it, but he's ignored him. He in turn gets around O'Connell and there's the siren. And at quarter time, Claremont are 4-8 to Swan Districts 4-1, a margin of seven points, but Claremont may well say what it could have been. The leading well kick-getter on the ground, Ken? Scott Rowland outstanding in the centre in the first quarter. Three marks, nine kicks and two effective hand passes. And Mark Hand, the Claremont captain on a wing, has had seven kicks. As Shane Strempel at full forward, five marks and seven kicks. Comments from Ken Casella. Shane Strempel has kicked three goals. Todd been a goal of one. And for Claremont, singles to Mitchell, to Thorne. That was a beauty. O'Connell and Peter Mann. It's Claremont by seven points here at quarter time. We take you back to the Rugby League now. Canberra lead Penrith by two points in the Rugby League Grand Final. So here at quarter time at Subiaco Oval, 4-8 to 4-1 in favour of the Tigers. And to sum up that first quarter, here's Keith Slater. Well, it was a quarter that Claremont got uh, a lot more advantage from the breeze than they expected because it really blew up after about 10 minutes. And uh, that wind sock was full of wind heading down to that Perth end of the ground. And that was the end that Claremont were kicking. And they appeared to have control across the centre in the general midfield play. They had their whole centre line, Tristy Hand and Rowland playing absolutely superbly. Cormac and Thorne were doing good things around that area. And, uh, but they, I thought their tactics were a little too square and not direct enough. They needed to be going straight down the ground with long kicks because they should have realised, being uh, league footballers and playing in a grand final, that they had a big advantage with that breeze. But uh, they tended to kick short and go wide, and it's been a trait of Claremont's play in the last bit of the season. And uh, all of a sudden, they allowed the desperate Swans defence to break up many, many attacks. And they really had to re rely on a bit of luck near the end of the quarter to get themselves in front at the, at the quarter time break. The luck was uh, a magnificent snap from Peter Thorne when the uh, ball was fumbled by Jeremy Gard. And then a missed kick from Danny Penny, which landed in the, in the arms of the uh, big centre half forward. Peter Mann, only 25 metres out. And uh, it was a, a kick that uh, Penny might uh, well regret as, 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 as the longer this game goes because he had broken clear. He had swans loose on that uh, grandstand side but the kick fell short. So two lucky goals, I would suggest to Claremont, has kept them in the game. But they didn't handle the breeze conditions all that well. They had a plus out of the centre. I thought uh, Ken Bell absolutely dominated the ruck again, and he really has made giant strides in this last part of the season. But Claremont had a system of using hand wide on the scoreboard flank. They had to go square to do it, but it allowed, uh, at least allowed them to get possession of the ball and take it away from the centre after Ken Bell had won most of the knocks. The other big plus for Swans was Shane Strempel, and what a quarter he played. You know, we don't see him take enough high marks, but he's taken four or five in that quarter, and he was absolutely sensational. He missed a couple, but he was far too good for John Scott, 
and I would think that uh, Gerard Nisham made an error by taking Peter Owens away from him because Peter Owens himself is a grand aerialist and uh, would have been far better suited to playing on Strempel who has used his body and his marking skills to the ex absolute extreme in that quarter and it, it is good uh, while when you can go forward and have a, have a target and attack where you can get reward for effort. That's exactly what Swan's got in that quarter as far as I'm concerned and now it'll be very interesting to see whether Swan's with the breeze and it's still blowing pretty strongly be very interesting to see what their tactics will, will be now they've got the breeze because if they use the breeze well and Strempel stays in the form he was in in that first quarter they could open up a fair break at half time well Nisham has got a problem back there Keith because with Hutton and uh, Strempel back there he's one tall man short he's got Owens on Hutton to put Owens back on Strempel now would release Hutton and uh, Todd's worked it fairly well in the second semi-final he had Hutton and Strempel at opposite ends of the ground which yep. gave Nisham the advantage but uh, now Nisham's got plenty to think about back there well Strempel is the man in form now Hutton has only been on the ground five minutes and sure he was instrumental in a goal but Strempel is the man that is big, his big problem because he's playing at full forward and uh, I don't know how many possessions in that quarter Ken I mean his stats uh, look uh, as though he's playing uh, down in the midfield somewhere they're that good Shane Strempel took five marks and had seven kicks in the first quarter actually he took six marks because he took, took a mark and he was penalised but he's been paid five marks and had seven kicks number 24 for Swan Districts and he's a, a giant of a man isn't he yep and Swans have had their problems of course across the centre of the ground where Andy Holmes had no idea where Mark Hand was he was taken from the field Narkel went out onto that, onto that wing and obviously John Todd had a talk to Andy Holmes and then back came Andy Holmes uh, and went straight back onto that wing the centre of the ground Scott Rowland was superb he is superb in the centre and even though Ken Bell was winning those knocks was quite often uh, sharked by Scott Rowland. Uh, the two wingmen, uh, especially uh, Don Pike, Pike never really got into the game much in that quarter, had a couple of kicks, but uh, nothing like we saw of him in the, in the second semi final. So both coaches have problems, but uh, John Todd has come out of the first quarter, as far as I'm concerned, with flying colours, mainly because Claremont have kicked 4 8, that's 12 shots to Swan District's 4 1, but they did have the advantage of a very strong breeze thing was, uh, Keith, that Ken Bell made eight effective ruck knockouts in the first quarter, yet Claremont got the first possession out of the centre seven times to two. Mainly Scott Rowland, I would yes. suggest. Yep. Certainly figured prominently, didn't he? Scott Rowland, umpire O'Reilly, gets the second quarter underway. Claremont by seven points. It's Bell opposed by Higgins. Bell wins the tap through the hands of Rowland. Passiri runs onto it and boot swans into attack up goes miles couldn't bring down the mark heavy collision with hutton going to the ground menegola playing the ball in front in there is david og he uh, scoops it out a chance now for swan for swan through walker walker's in front of the pack the snap on goal from walker is home in the opening minute of the second quarter swans kick back strongly and uh, now trail by only one behind claremont a four eight Swans of 5-1. Well, how can you improve as much as Ken Bell has in the second half of this season? Absolutely outstanding performance. So he got the knock again on that occasion, and it was Passiri who picked it up, and Greg Walker who started on the interchange, but he's made an impact on the game because he's been quite superb since coming on. A class rover, and following the ball down, kicking a goal. He doesn't kick enough goals, but he centred that one. Great start for Swans in the early moments of this second quarter. Up goes Higgins on the ball now. He won that knock, but it's going to be Swans who'll bring it away again. No one. Bell couldn't pick it up. Guard is dispossessed. Davy sockers to half forward, and Miles takes the mark. Now, his disposal has been appalling so far, and it's no better this time. Roland was 20 metres clear of Fasiri, and he's put Fasiri in the van. That's the Miles kick. He gets it back towards Strempel at full forward, and Scott could almost have given away the Menangola. kick. Menangola. Oh, Menegola has kicked a goal. That's an unbelievable goal. I thought it was out of play. I think it's Dave. Delby. David Ogg it is. But Ogg, sorry, it wasn't Menegola, it was Ogg. That is an unbelievable goal. Heavens above, I was too busy waiting for the ball to be called out. Well, there's the ball right deep in the pocket. Now, from behind, we see Scott making the spoil. And it is David Ogg. I thought it was Menegola. I didn't think... Og had the brilliance to do that. We see Men and Cola do that in every now and then. But we talked about Peter Thorne's lucky goal. Well, uh, I think they're lucky when they kick him from that angle. But that really is a gem of a goal. Two quick ones to Swans. Lewis was arguing with the umpire. I don't know what about. He thought it was out of bounds, Trev. Right, it's Mitchell who's got it now. Claremont need to lift their rating. The kick into the pocket is for Hutton. He's being held by Eaton. He takes the mark anyway. And a good mark, wasn't it? He withstood the pressure. Kept his eye on the ball. John Hutton will set this up on the goal line. 
It's a good-looking drop punt. It'll land in the square. Bell is there. Up he goes. Fisted away. Crumps to Cormac. Hand pass to guard. His snap on goal oh, is home. Hey. They're kicking them from everywhere. <laughs> so the quick reply from the Claremont Tigers off the boot of Jerry McGuard, and that was another classic. Yeah, and a beautiful piece of roving by Cormac. He was right at the bottom of the pack. There's the spoil coming from Bell. Les Cormac. This way, that away. There's the man I want, Jeremy Gard. One step, bang, straight through the middle. Great game of footy, this. The standard is high. The players are producing all their full potential all around the ground, and it's a great spectacle. Good crowd here, too, so this could be a great afternoon. Claremont, Claremont by one by, point. Claremont by a point, and the, the clouds are threatening as Beresford prepares to come onto the ground. Higgins is up. Ineffective ruck play. Penny off the ground. Baseri in front. No mark, surely. Holding the ball. Penalised for holding the ball. This took too long. He should have played the whistle. Now Mitchell is loose. The kick has gone in his direction. If he can get to it. Oh, he got a terrible bounce. Gives Penny a chance close to the line. And again, poor disposal by Claremont. Oh, push against Penny. I don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. Mitchell has the free kick on the half forward flank. And this wind is really gusting now. As Mitchell kicks it in towards the pocket. And Hutton again. He has an uncanny ability to mark a ball on his chest. The umpire's whistle is gone and the free kick is going Swan District's way. Be taken back there by Eaton, I think it is, in that pocket as Scott comes off the ground and Beresford goes on. Burton is going back to full back on Strempel. Why? Boy, there's a boy on a man's errand. Yeah, but can play. No, Miles is going to cover Miles, Strempel. Yep. Right, Roland kicks back towards centre half forward. Gow in front. First mark, I think. Yes, first mark, first touch. Gow goes straight down to the centre of the ground. Menegola was in front. Higgins missed what he should have taken. Lewis has it. He goes past the centre square, chips the ball Played. out wide. Guard has it. He'll draw a player. Goes across the top to Man. The man should go. If he doesn't, Cormac should. He was tripped. Oh, he must get the kick. Man misses off the side of the boot. Eaton has it. And Claremont will whinge about that. Oh, the trip. Markle has it. Back goes the hand pass to Eaton. It kicks into Mitchell. It ricochets across to Gow. Gow gets it to Bell. He's pushed off the ball. Play on is the call. Now they're going to bounce it down. But, <laughs> oh, heavens above. Wouldn't Claremont have reason to gripe? Well, with the straight out trip, while the umpires have missed so much and given so much to Petty that they really have added nothing at all to this game. Important bounce for both sides. Up goes O'Connell. Beaten by Bell. Sharp by Holmes. Hand passes through the traffic. Grasso's there. He's bungled out of bounds with the ball. Boundary throw in at left full forward for Claremont. O'Connell doing the ruck work. Bell gets front position and should have got the kick. Well, it's one thing to let it go, but you must pay the obvious. Well, I mean, they've been very hard to follow. That's all I can say. But let's get off the umpires because they spoil your day. We welcome our regional viewers back to the second quarter of the grand final as man hooks on goal. And Grasso stands his ground almost on the goal line. It's Claremont 5-8 to Swans 6-1. Claremont lead by a point after Swans kicked two great goals in the opening minutes, in the opening moments of this second quarter. Over Claremont have got one back. The bounce of the ball favours Narkel, as you saw. Up towards centre wing he goes. Looks to the half forward line. Claremont in best position to mark. Beresford showed some courage. Over the top was Hutton. And he's a little bit groggy. Getting to his feet now, he'd remember... Well, he probably wouldn't remember that part of the ground, actually, because that's where he went to ground last week in the preliminary final. A surprise inclusion this afternoon, Brent Hutton. And he's wearing number two, which is Brad Shine's number, for those people who have just tuned in. Davey over the top with a good knock, too, but it's taken by Beresford. Now it's with Panizza. Panizza chips it down to guard on centre wing. He needed to take that cleanly. Gets the hand pass in the direction of Higgins. Higgins has got time to kick it. Wants to hand pass and gets it to hand. An influential player in this game. Hand from the attacking side of centre wing. Puts it down towards Hutton and Eaton. Hutton did very well to backhand it. He's tied it up in there for Claremont. We'll have a bounce about 30 metres out from the Claremont goal. And uh, the Tigers deep in attack. And I feel the Tigers have lifted their rating. While they know they've made a mess of the first quarter. And their rating has been lifted noticeably in this second quarter. Well, perhaps they've been inspired by that missed trip by the umpire almost in the goal square. Chance now for two very talented young players in there. One Whoa. was Og, the other was Mann. Brilliant. And away comes Penny. Oh, and Hutton goes in after Og. The kick goes wide in the direction of Holmes. Burton gets his hand to it, but he's outnumbered two to one. He needs oh. to get it out of play and does. And the throw will take place at half forward for Swan District. Almost a one-handed throw there. One, one behind punch. the difference. Favour of the Tigers. Seven and a half minutes in. 
Davey and Higgins. Higgins a lot taller. Davey did well, though, in a tight situation. Picked up by Beresford, runs into Walker. Pike didn't really need that hand pass, and he's under a severe pressure. Vernon will bounce it down again at right half forward for the, the Swan side. Pikey said, I thought they were in my back, Mr. Vernon. Davey again. Higgins flicks it over the back. Thorne let it go for Pike. He's run down from behind by Langsford. Kicked upfield by Menegola. Only as far as Beresford. He's away through centre half back. The kick lacks depth. Grasso in front, but a fickle bounce for him. But he was being pushed, according to the umpire. And Rick Grasso, the Sandover medalist this year, takes a bit of Grasso off his tongue. And being and being held the free kick. Being held for a long time on that occasion. Good one, too, to centre half forward. Hutton in front. Up he goes. Destroyed by Owens. It's back on the members' wing. Han leads in the race. Ogg's with him. Close to the boundary. Ogg, good speed and a good getaway by Ham. Ham pass to Owens. It was a bit slick for Evans. It allows Grasso and Penny in. Evans showed good courage. Guard was being held. He'll take the free kick for Claremont. See, that was well played by Evans. Superbly played by Tony Evans. Penny just ruffling Han's hair up. Guard goes looking for his full forward. Out comes David O'Connell. With him is Hetherington. Worried him out of it. Crumbs come to Don Holmes. Oh, Scrambles yeah. a kick for Siri, worried by Pike. In goes Claremont through man onto, day, uh, onto Pike. There's the snap, but it's across the face. Out of bounds in the right full forward pocket. Claremont into attack. They lead by one behind at the nine minute mark of the second quarter. What a terrible kick by Don Holmes. I think he might have kicked the ground. Don Pike. Now Don Holmes has oh, he Don cleared Holmes, out yeah. of the defence for Swans. Both Dons. Boundary throw in. Chance for Cormac, out of play on the fourth. On the bad knock by, knock by uh, O'Connell. He's, he's a superb boundary ruckman, is David O'Connell. He got that down beautifully then. Now the kick back into play will be taken by Mick Grasso. This is a tough, unrelenting quarter of football. It goes towards the half-back line and Gow takes the mark. Starting to come into the game is Paul Gow. Gow wants something in the centre, but there's not much on offer. The kick goes towards centre wing. Davey is in front and Lewis pushed him in the back. Free kick will go to Sean Davey. A lot of mistakes being made by players out there. Davey, not sure where to go. He goes straight towards the centre half forward position and up at the back was Owens. Walker has it. He's Beautiful elusive and he's quick. He can get it to Pasiri. It's with Narkel now. Bend to the wards of pocket and Pasiri. It's well done. Play on the call. Good umpiring. Pike is harassing Pasiri and comes away with the ball. Beresford gets it wide. Peniza is still under a certain amount of pressure. Now they've got the run. Roland is 20 metres ahead of the play. And here's a quick rebound by Claremont. He's trying to draw Narkel to him and he's been able to do that. Across the top it goes to Burton. Burton just avoids the oncoming player. Man loses control. He can kick from 50 metres. He's pulled it in towards the pocket. Grasso. Another relieving mark. Very good piece of umpiring down there, Wallen. Well called because umpire Vernon could have easily have blown that mark. Grasso finds Langsford. How many touches for Mick Grasso today, Ken? Oh, seven yes. kicks for Mick Grasso. Yes. Langsford makes a mess of it. Yes, looking for Penny. He'll want that to go out. Mitch will make sure of it. Well, you can't afford to make stuck mistakes like that on Langsford when you're deep in defence. That wasn't even close to Penny. Maybe it was good pressure from Mitchell. Boundary throw in. Right full forward pocket. Up goes Bell. Got his fist to it. To the side of the pack. It's Mann who's in control of the football, though. Cornered by Gow. Kicks back to the pocket. Bell's there. Good strong mark. Much improved player. Pressure. Uh, Clearman applying enormous pressure at the moment. The kick back to half back. Gow will fly. He's into the back of Mann, I thought. Payon says the umpire. Og knocks it on. In the road, though. Peniza. Got a trip. Oh. Payon again. Lewis gets it away to guard. On it goes to Evans from 50 metres out. Evans the rover. The kick is into the square. Goal Grasso. Did he interfere with Cormac? It's off the boot of Cormac. It's a goal. Uh, a bounce through for a goal. A yeah. right goal to Tony Evans. Evans. Oh. Well, let's have another look at it. It's a little bit of congestion in the square. Oh. A boot was thrust out, but it may have bounced through. Off the boot of Evans for a goal. He's on the right foot too. He's let's usually a left footer. Square, Keith. Yeah, it's a, it's a big off break. Yes, and, uh, cleared the players. Yeah, that was always going to be a point, but uh, a little bit of luck involved there, but uh, that counts, and Tony Evans is really showing his worth today. A very robust performance. 
37 plays 44 in favour of the Tigers. Sorry, Trev. The margin seven points now as Roland puts them into attack again. The target out here is Mann. Storming towards it is O'Connell who collided with Mitchell. That was poor foot football by Claremont. Han, perhaps doing a little too much, gets it to Mann now. Mann goes back infield. Good hand pass to Guard. Guard can't elude Holmes. Brilliantly chased by Andy Holmes. Guard was pushed in the back. Then they go on top again, just in case there was any doubt about the first one. And Jeremy Guard is unharmed. He will get to his feet. O'Connell is off the ground and Fitzgerald is back on. Here's the tackle by Holmes. Looked to be a trip almost yeah. too. And in they go on top. It was accidental, but I think it was there, Keith. Yeah, well, they don't often pay them, but they should pay them. Guard from about 45 metres won't get the goal with that kick. Fitzgerald, the leaper, Hutton needed to take it first time. Handle. Hasn't got the ball, it must be bounced. <laughs> Couldn't find the hand. Well, if he picked it up first time, he could almost have gone to the goal line, John Hutton. But he wasn't able to do that, and so Swans get a chance to clear it up. To tidy it up. And I think they'll probably thump it through. Fitzgerald brings it down to the boundary line, gets it back infield was good thinking. Well, that's dangerous by Langsford, but it lands with Fasiri. Luck to fortune, Walter. And Peter Hurdle will come back on. Now, Swans have got to do something about this wing. They have done something. Narkel's now playing on hand. Well, dangerous here, too. The target was Menegola, stolen by Burton, but he's hand-passed only as far as Gow. And Gow kicks towards the outer wing, and Andy Holmes knocks it on. That was clever. He uh, saw David Ogg was clear. Uh, he didn't get a favourable bounce, and now he's put out of business by Peniza. So the end result didn't work out for Swans. Very, very stuff by Andy Holmes. You've got to take possession in those situations. 44 plays 37 in favour of Claremont. Davy and Higgins. Higgins too robust for Davy. Wins the tap. Shark by Minagola though. Hand pass upfield. David Ogg got a good bounce. Well tackled by Beresford. Peniza put Walker under pressure. That comes to Pasiri in the right full forward pocket. Going back with a flight. Miles. Did he touch it? I don't think he did. No. Another incredible goal. We saw one at the other end a moment ago off the boot of Evans. And that one came off the boot of Pasiri. And he's getting congratulated from Sean Davey. Yeah. So it's goal for goal. One point the difference in favour of the Tigers. Freak goal. Knocked on by Og. And uh, in fact, it was knocked on eventually by Walker. And look at the pace of Pasiri. Straight through the pack, right on the boundary line, and threads it through. We've seen some freak goals in this game from both sides. And most of them from that right full forward pocket at the Perth end. 44 plays 43 at the 14 minute mark of the second quarter. The ground is bathed in bright sunshine, but it is black out to the west. Absolutely black as Narkel kicks Swans forward again and in front is Menegola. Swans with the break from the centre. Bell is racing off the ground to be replaced by Hodel. The kick towards full forward. Back goes Owens. He's deep in the back pocket. Not too many options. One of them was a short option, and fortunately Cormac took the mark. Fortunately for Claremont. Now he looks to the outer wing. It's a one-on-one -on -one contest here between Davy and Lewis. Lewis lost his footing at the crucial moment. Davy in the van now. Out in pursuit of him as man. The kick to the half forward line of Pasiri again takes the mark. He hooks it inside 50. Owens is in front. Strempel over the top will make him earn it. Good Walker driving. at ground level. Back towards the square. Hutton is there. Push on Miles. Out on the full. That's the pocket. There's Bell. The pocket into which the wind is blowing. It obviously got hold of that ball as it went high. And so Claremont have the chance to clear it here as Miles goes straight down towards centre wing. He gets it well out of uh, goal. Up goes Davey. The race is on now between Holmes and Lewis. That could have been a kick to Holmes. Knock wide of the pack. Chance for Cormac. He did well. Right. Got out of the tackle nicely. To Burton was not a good hand pass. It's gone too far and he's been caught earlier. Gets it rid of it this time. Cormac can't find the handle. They've got players ahead of the game if they can get it to them. One of them is Thorne and he can't keep... Yes, no, he can't keep it in. Well, Claremont are still indecisive as far as I'm concerned, Keith. Well, they're fumbling the ball at crucial times and uh, they had a three-on-one situation then. But they've held Swans out in this quarter so far. Swans going with the breeze. Lewis caught by Holmes. Must be holding the ball. Decision from the up umpire. Yeah. Play on. Picked up by Pike. Pike's heading for home. He's run to half forward. There's the kick into the pocket. Brilliant. Oh, it bounces in front of Fitzgerald. He's got it, but he couldn't control it. A little bit of indecision again there. Mitchell. The well, forwards. Mitchell should have taken the mark. I thought so. He stood back for man, but Mitchell could have taken that easily. Fitzgerald's on the ball. He's opposed by Strempel this time. He brings it down to the front for Mann. Caught by Strempel. Hand pass was wild. Mitchell's there. He's caught. Slung to the deck by Penny. And that's out of bounds in the full forward pocket. 
Well, I don't like this move by John Todd. He's taken Bell off the ground with Swans kicking with the breeze. And Strepple under the think. ball. Yep. Undermanned on the ball. Fitzgerald nudged underneath it by Strimple. Play on the call. Man under pressure. And so is Hetherington. There's Peter Mann picking himself up a bit gingerly. Can you keep us posted, Ken, on the man Gow stats? Man two marks, Gow two marks, man eight kicks, Gow three, man four effective hand passes. Man won that tap, was an awkward bounce. Penny's in there, knocked on by Gow, pushed out by Evans. He's in the pocket, Strempel went after him, missed him. In goes the uh, Claremont player in Pike. He's also bundled out of bounds. Oh, three the kick has been picked out. A deliberate push out and Paul Gow the recipient. The kick towards half back. Higgins didn't hold the mark. Davies there now for Swans. Hand pass inboard for Og. He got a fickle bounce. Now he's cornered. He's running out of space. Another boundary throw in. Left half forward for Claremont. Claremont a 6 9. Swans a 7 1. Claremont by one point. That's 17 minutes into the second quarter. Swans would perhaps be a little bit disappointed. Three goals so far in this term. They did so well in the first quarter. And it goes out again. Now he's penalised for holding the ball, Lewis. A deliberate push out, well. Just as a matter of interest, while Collingwood are absolutely killing Essendon. Ten goals in front. This is Holmes at right centre wing. The kick goes up towards half forward. Men and goal are in front. Oh, oh, over the top. Good mark. Yep. He's a grand aerialist. Gee, I like to see him take a mark. There's some good aerialists in this game. Owen's one of them. Hutton, Strimple, take beautiful marks. Some good goal kickers too. He so plays far. on with a hand pass. Gets it to Pike, who's starting to get into the game. And he's been given plenty of room in which to the run. Needs a good kick. Evans, good mark. Strong mark. Evans is midway between centre wing and half forward. Might have been a bit hasty there, the umpire. Kicks in towards the half forward line. Man and Gow. Oof. Chance now for guard. No one to give it to. Hetherington off the ground. Lands with Penny and away comes Swans. Back towards centre half forward. They're applying the pressure as often as they can. Burton was up when he should have waited down. Great tackle. High tackle. Oh, I don't know about that. Walker with the free kick. Yeah, but it was beautiful roving, wasn't it? A lovely tackle. Just a bit too high. Walker from just outside half forward. Chance here for Swans. Big chance for Swans as Hutton takes the mark. Will Hutton lift with Strample not being there? It's happened before. And, of course, Strample now on the ruck with Bell off the field. Hutton has got to do the job at full forward. And that's his first real sign of form. Good, strong mark, that, against uh, another good aerist in Peter Owens. Now, there's the black eye from last week. Now, if Hutton was to goal here, it would put Swans in front. They've taken a long time to get in front. They've been there earlier in the term, but surrendered the lead very quickly again. It's a good kick, no doubt about that. That's their eighth goal. Their 8 one Claremont are 6-8. 20 minutes have gone in the second quarter and this next 10 minutes will be crucial. Yes, and Fairman have played very well in this quarter because they got themselves into a bit of a hole after not using the breeze well in the first quarter. There's a strong mark by Hutton and we could see some great marking contests down there with Owen and Hutton opposing each other and Hutton really does have lovely skills. Look at that kick, dead centre through the top of the posts but now, just 20 minutes into this second quarter, a very vital 10 minutes of footy coming up. No doubt about that, Keith. That would give Hutton an enormous boost. And they're showing a lot of courage to even be out there today. Higgins and Strimple. Higgins wins the tap. Wide for Evans. Evans scrambles the kick. For Siri got a hand to it. Now Retzlaff tried to kick it forward. It's a miss. He picks it up again. It came from Narkel. The kick the centre half forward. A lot of pushing and shoving. Off hands to Beresford. His kick only travels about six or seven metres. Evans went without it. He's got a second chance. Tackled strongly by Og. For Siri, dispossessed. Higgins now for Claremont. Here come the Tigers. Good kick into attack. Almost a mark taken there by Strample. Grasso's bucked over by Hutton. Eaton confronted by Guard. Oh, come, there. Come to Roland. The oh. free kick has been pushed, uh, picked out. Oh, he's lucky. He is lucky because he handballed straight to Hutton. Grasso's not sure where he is. Got but a heavy one. Got a boot in the face after the heavy one. Flower bag punt to the middle of the ground. Og and Owens get mixed up. So does Burton. Walker the crumbs was good. Minigolder at close quarters. Runs inside 50. Can he kick a goal? On the run. It looks good. We'll wait on it. It's both. He's offline. Oh Gee, it must have been over the post. It was uh, very close. You know, what, you know what confused him, Keith? Is the player didn't come to him. 
he was waiting to draw the player and in the end he had to kick it himself well i think the players always wanted him to kick it himself because there was no one in the square and he's a lovely kick at goal how's this david o'connell just come off the interchange bench <laughs> he hit, snuck up the ground, <laughs> takes the kick from Panizza. Oh, that's in, oh, that's terrible. a terrible kick. Boots it up the wing, taken by Ratzlaff. Claremont in a spot of bother here. Swans can uh, get a handy break by half time if they can keep up the pressure. Hut and a hand pass to Narkel outside 50. Brilliant to Hodel. Well, he's, he's the man to give it to, isn't he? Phil Narkel. He really does use the ball superbly. And of course, if he plays well here today, we could well see him in Melbourne next week because someone has got to come in to replace Lamb as David O'Connell has Cam Shepard having a long, long talk to him. And in case our country listeners didn't hear that one or before, Lamb suspended by a week today for a week. Hodel's kick on goal. Sneaked in the right side of the post. He's brought up a major. And he's been very quiet so far in the game. Got a heavy knock and was off the ground for a while. But also another confidence booster there for Peter Hogel wearing some battle scars from last week. Yeah, there's the Hutton handball. He picked the right man give it to with Phil Markle because he has got magnificent vision and magnificent kicking skills and epitomised by that lovely pass to Peter Hodel and he made no mistake. Grasso in a bit of trouble on that halfback flank. We'll keep our eyes on him. He's playing on Jeremy Gard and he's holding his head. He's popped the heavy one, I reckon. And a Clermont in a bit of trouble in the game. Has the bounce ever? of the ball actually favoured the wind favoured uh, Swans there but it's taken by hand short to the half forward line and O'Connell takes the mark Mitchell is loose at centre half forward I think that's no it was intended for Hutton who was then held Eaton and Claremont I really believe uh, in disarray Grasso has it on the half back line Where their forward line to? their forward line in particular is just totally ineffective at the moment it goes to the half uh, to centre wing Hodel has it here's it odd another chance here for Swans they've got no one in the square he's gone for distance Beresford going back I don't think he'll get to it oh. the bounce soon oh. oh gee you could be stiff is that a fickle bounce or what Walter well you would have <laughs> if it had run on it would have suited Swans it sat and you would have thought that would have suited Beresford but it bounced away and in the end I guess favoured Claremont because it went through for a point but well, Swans have been very wasteful you know they've run into two open goals in the last couple of minutes well, they've had only 12 scoring shots to Claremont's 14, and they're in front. Here's another chance for Retzlaff to hammer home the advantage. He has, I think. It's a good kick from Retzlaff. That's the 10th to Swans. They're 10-3. Claremont is 6-8. And uh, the onus now is on Claremont to respond. Yep, and uh, that really now is starting to tell. Swans have started to find their very best form. And Miles' kick in is intelligently punched forward. Beautifully punched forward and beautifully rode by Retzlaff. You see the 50-metre line. I think it was Menengola that got his fists on that while falling backwards. But gee, it was an intelligent thing to do. And he really set it up for Retzlaff. But they could have been further in front because we've seen Og and Menengola run into open goals and miss. Man on the ball, Trevor. Man's having to do the ruck work. O'Connell centre half forward. 19 points in favour of Swans. Strempel wins the tap. Chance in the middle now for Cormac. Hand pass to Roland. Shocking kick around his body, but it lands with guard fortuitously. Another indiscriminate kick by guard. It also lands with David O'Connell, who should be penalised and is. Well, even that was a terrible kick forward, wasn't it? Well, I mean, guard had time, and he just hurried a mongrel punt forward. Penny, very cool in the crisis. Kick oh. that was ill-directed. Lands with guard. Uh, twice Penny has missed kick to uh, the telling effect. They might need a goal. This is meant for Mitchell. He's in the van and takes the mark, opposed by Holmes. Takes a good, strong mark, doesn't he, Kevin Mitchell? Has the ability to keep his eye on the ball under pressure. I wonder if we'll see him in the Eagles colours. Kevin Mitchell plays on, backs himself, and he's oh, caught by the leg. Oh. He's caught holding the ball. Well, he yeah. seemed to be trapped by the leg for mine, but we'll go with the umpire's decision. Gee, Claremont are making some terrible mistakes. They really... As Wally's hit the nail on the head, indecision. The two helmeted players relieve the pressure. Narkel to half forward, Minigola, almost the mark. Comes to Burton, he's in trouble. Hand pass for Pike, who's held. Play on the call, Minigola gets a hand pass to Davey. Runs Ooh. into Man, or Man ran into him. The Cubs come to Pike. Pike's on the outer side of the ground. He's caught high, play on. Advantage rule paid, in fact. Kicked upfield by Panizza. At the back is Penny, so is Strempel. Hutton comes to lend support to his teammate in Mitchell, but it's over the line and out of bounds. Man is injured, behind play, Peter Mann's gone. Well, he was the man that ran into Davey. He ran very strongly into Sean Davey out there. He's, and uh, obviously he's hurt himself. He's uh, hurt himself all right. He's got a high tackle, and uh, he's uh, really feeling it. Strempel won the tap, sharp by Cormac. 
Cormac just inside 50. Shocking kick, though. It's towards the square, but nicely read by Retzlaff, who pumps it back. Fitzgerald's there and takes the mark for Claremont. It's pretty ordinary play by Retzlaff. I know he was under pressure, but he must take time out. Man still holding his head behind play. The trainers have left him now. Terrible kick. Oh. Lands with Grasso. Stakes are unbelievable. Must be a flat football. Well, Swans have every chance of winning this game. The way Claremont are playing, and they need to capitalise. They need another goal before half time, and they will have everything to play for then. And Grasso runs away from O'Connell. There just appears to be no spirit, no feeling out there for Claremont. This is Burton who gets it to Pike. Pike in turn eludes Holmes. Hand pass is not a good one. It was with Roland. Back it goes to Man to Han. Han goes on to Thorne. He's gone, holding the ball. Oh dear. That is superb tackling. Be vicious from that him. really is superb tackling. Swan's yep. confidence is growing as the game goes on. Pickington drives to the half forward line where Swans have a chance. Hutton did well. Walker has the ball. No one in the square. The bounce is crucial. It's a good bounce, a kind bounce for Swans. And Swans have got a victory set up here. The second to Walker. They are in the box seat now, and Claremont really will have to find something special to win this game. The desperation by Hutton paying dividends, and Swans have got that super desperation all over the field. There's Walker. That was after Hutton got there in the nick of time, and the Walker, a little favoured by the bounce, but he knew there was no one in the square, and it only had to be straight. But that was precipitated by some magnificent tackling around about the half-back line, repetition tackling that brought Peter Thorne undone and allowed Swans to go into attack. I go back to your statement about eight minutes ago. You said it was a crucial part of the game, and it's worked out that way. Swans have really played brilliant football with the breeze. Now a chance here for Pike. Good run from Penizra off the half-back line. He steadies now, runs to half-forward. He looks for a teammate at full forward. At the back is Fitzgerald. Up he goes, couldn't take the mark. Evans too high. He'll take the free kick in the left full forward pocket. Hetherington pleading his case to the umpire, but to, to no advantage. You've got to be impressed with the way Evans approaches his ball, and there's no doubt about it being too high. A little unlucky, I suppose, young Eaton, but he made his ball the main object then. He didn't worry about what was coming at him, and he's earned the free kick, and gee, declare might need a goal here, and he's just the man to kick one. They trailed by 25 points for Tigers. Evans' has kick at goal looks good. Now it's back to 19 points, two goals for Tony Evans. We've played 29 minutes in the second quarter. And there's the half-time siren. So it's Evans who brings up the goal right on the siren for his second of the match. 19 points the difference at half-time. Spawns 11-3-69. Lead the Tigers, seven goals, eight, 50. 19 points in favour of Spawns. And in that quarter, they went from 4-1 to 11-3 with the breeze after a pretty slow first 15 minutes, but they really turned on the pressure in the last half of the quarter, and Claremont went from 4 goals 8 to 7 goals 8. Three goals for them against the breeze. Ken Casillas, the leading kick getter, to halftime. Scott Rowland, the Claremont Centerman, is still the leading kick getter. He had nine in the first quarter, but three in the second, so he's had 12. Mark Han on a wing for Claremont, two kicks in that second quarter. He's had nine. Mick Grasso in defence for Swans, three marks and nine kicks. Daryl Panizza in defence for Claremont's had eight. Jeff Miles has had eight. Sean Davey, a good forward for Swans, he's had seven kicks. Jeff Basiri showing great pacing midfield. He's had eight kicks. Greg Walker, six. And Don Holmes, seven. And there's Paul Gow wearing a, a nasty, bloodied uh, face there as he comes off the field with a very proud-looking bunch of Swan District footballers. We didn't think it was a tough game either. Yeah, it certainly has been tough. Any other leading kick getters, Ken, you'd like to mention? Uh, Brendan Retzlav uh, in, in defence for Swans had eight kicks. Menegola up forward for Swans has had six. Phil Narkel's had six, five in that quarter. He came a, a lot better. Jeremy Gard for Claremont's had six. Evans has had six. Cormac, seven. Don Holmes has had seven. And uh, Jeff Basir, as I said, has had eight. Uh, Peter Mann playing at centre-half forward and laterally in the ruck for Claremont. Eight kicks, three effective uh, ruck knockouts and four effective hand passes. Penny in defence for Swans has had seven kicks. And... Uh, looking at uh, Strempel, five marks and seven kicks, all in the first quarter and in the second quarter, Shane Strempel didn't touch the football. The free kicks at half time, Claremont 12, Swan Districts 15. And let's uh, talk football again now. Swans are back on the ground. Let's go to Ken Casillas with some statistical information on the first half. Thanks Trevor. Well in the first half uh, Claremont had a couple of outstanding performances in the first quarter, Scott Rowland and Mark Han. They were less effective in the second quarter, but at half-time, Rowland, the Claremont centreman, 
12 kicks and five effective hand passes. He had nine of those 12 kicks in the first quarter. Mark Hand, the Claremont captain on the wing, he had seven of his nine first half kicks in the first quarter. Ken, uh, if I can just come over the top of you there. The rain has just started to fall at Subiaco Oval, so that is going to be a very handy lead, I would think. 19 points is a great lead with the rain starting to fall, and we might have a wet second half. There's Jared Neesham, uh, the Claremont coach. He's got some worries on his mind. There's some of the other leading possession getters in the first half. Darrell Panizza, a good defender for Claremont with his eight kicks. Shane Stremple, five marks and seven kicks in the first quarter. He didn't get a touch of the football in the second quarter until he went into the ruck and he got a couple of ruck knockouts. Joe Cormack, a fair rover for Claremont with his seven kicks. Don Holmes has played in all parts of the field. He played in defence in the second quarter with his seven kicks. Danny Penny, a good strong defender for Swans with his seven kicks. And Sean Davey has done well across half forward for Swans with his seven kicks. The free kicks at half time. Claremont have had 12 and Swan Districts 15. The first possessions out of the centre, Claremont 11 and Swan Districts 8. Thanks, Ken. And the uh, rain's coming yeah. down now, Keith. I think the uh, weather forecast was for rain at 4 o'clock. They Robert, haven't done a bad job, have they? Six minutes to four, so <laughs> they're a little out, aren't they? But uh, what difference will this make on the game? Well, we've seen a very high standard game so far. We saw a very wet second quarter in the second semi final and we're all disgusted with that quarter. I don't think it'll happen again. It's very light rain, but it'll most of the inconvenience Claremont a little. They're kicking with the breeze. They were very wasteful with the breeze in the first quarter where they attempted to pinpoint the ball and go wide instead of going straight down the middle of the ground. I'm sure that Jared Neesham would have picked that up and instructed his team that they must take use of this breeze. They'll have it for the final time in this game. Well, we can't, we can't see out the back, Keith, so uh, I don't know how black it is out there. In fact, away to the west where we have a glimpse of the skyline, it doesn't look too bad. But the weather quarter this afternoon is the northwest. That's where the wind is coming from. That's where the rain will come from. Um, and if, uh, if it's as dark out there as it was this time yesterday afternoon in Perth, then we're in for some very heavy rain. And I think uh, that in these conditions, um, with that lead, it could almost prove to be... A very decisive lead. Well, not, neither of these sides have distinguished themselves in, in, the, in the wet conditions during this season. We saw South Fremantle comprehensively take uh, Claremont apart at Claremont Oval late in the last uh, round of fixtures. And uh, in the second semi-final, as I said, we saw that second quarter of football, which for the, for the quality of player in the game was absolutely disgraceful. But uh, these players today have really committed to themselves. Most of them have played at their full potential. Not so much Claremont, I don't suppose. They've had a few players down and uh, they have been indecisive on many occasions where they've sort of stood back and let one or the other go for the ball and uh, generally uh, not the real sure handling, classy moving Claremont side that we expect. But then again, the pressure from Swans has been uh, quite outstanding. We've saw a lot of repetitive tackling, which is good tackling. And we've seen some freak goals kicked in the game. Strimple's back at full forward. Str uh, Bell will start on the, on the uh, ruck for Swans and uh, Higgins for Clermont. A seven-goal second term from Swan District sets up their 19-point lead at the start of the third quarter. Chance for Claremont to go forward. Cormac gets it on beautifully to Thorne. He took too long, was dragged off it by Penny. In comes uh, Langsford. He kicks towards the boundary line, going square across the ground, and the ball will run out of play before Hutton can get to it. Well, it's a northwesterly breeze, and uh, this is the, 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 the flank to kick goals from, so uh, Claremont's still in the van here, as far as I'm concerned. Very blustery win now as O'Connell goes up and hooks it to the front of the pack, gets it to Hutton, hurried kick from Roland, off the side of the boot, chance for Langsford, the ball running away from him, it goes towards Narkel, oh, who brilliant. did it well, he's caught and threw it away. The umpire didn't see it, he had his back to him, Narkel had his back to the umpire, Penny gets it to Gandini, further afield it goes to Retzlaff, play on is the call, the, the free kick was awarded, the kick in towards centre-half forward, Strempel missed it, Walker has it to Andy Holmes, no one in the square, crucial kick, it's a good kick! One strike the first blow in the third quarter, and now Claremont face an uphill task. Well, Andy Holmes hasn't been in the game much, but that was brilliantly played by Swan Strempel. Beautifully rode by Walker. He's got some ability reading ball off hands, and a slick handball accommodating Andy Holmes, streaming down the middle of the ground. There's the Walker handball, and Holmes composed, balanced, and straight through the open goal. So a brilliant start by Swans, kicking into the breeze. Claremont's last chance with the breeze. They trail, trail by 25 points. They have got some work to do. Comments from Keith Slater. 25 points. Bounce favours Bell. Higgins bowls Narkel over the way, trying to get to the football. 
Langsford dispossessed. Penny, good ball handling into the greasy conditions. Kicks it out wide. Out there is Han. With him is Gandini. Han is too elusive on this occasion. Then goes square. That was oh. shocking. Holmes got a hand to it. Burton's got it now. Oh. Well tackled. Now Ogg's in uh, control of the football. Pushing towards the goal. Ogg snap is offline. Way offline. Out of bounds on the full. Gee, their, perse their perseverance with tackles is really causing Claremont some problems, Swans. They're really determined and they have a, a second tackler there most of the time. Didn't we say during the year that that square football would bring them undone one day? Yeah, we did. There's the kick. Marked by Don Holmes. Kicked in field. Kicked to Gandini. He was flattened crudely. He was never going to mark it. And they've given him the kick. Is, right. he, is he playing on a wing out there? I've got a feeling he's on a wing playing on Mark Ham. Can use the ball. Doesn't use it this time, though. Burton, at close quarters, came off the boot to Peniza. Peniza looks for his skipper and finds him. Still deep in defence, though, Claremont. Swans have a sniff of that flag. There's the pass. On the end of it is Cormac. But they're still short of half-back. He wants to go by hand. Ten metres defensively to Higgins. Incredible football. Back to the middle of the ground. It clears O'Connell. Knocked on by Mitchell for Rowland, but Narkel was with him. Oh, he's brilliant. Narkel gets a hand pass to Hedrington, dispossessed by Pike. Mitchell gets mixed up with O'Connell. It's slippery, that ball. Scramble out there now. Guard's got it. He goes defensively to Han. They're still backward of the circle. Evans but free. He, a player loses Thorne. He takes the mark. Thought about the hand pass. And again, gets around Grasso. Hooks to the top of the square, but Eaton's in the way. Good strong mark under pressure from Hutton. Again, indecision, Trevor. Peter Thorne not making up his mind early enough. Swan's running the ball out of defence. Passiri has it almost up on centre wing. Kicks close to the boundary line. At the back as Burton takes the mark. Pretty ordinary disposal by Jeff Passiri. I think the drizzle has stopped. I'm not sure for how long. As Pike breaks towards centre half forward. Thorne is unmarked again. Good mark. So they're getting the ball this far, but they can't do anything else. Poor hand pass. Won't sit for Mitchell. It's slippery. He's got to get rid of Bell and wasn't able to do that. Well played, Bell. Jared Neesham has gone to man at full forward in this quarter. Gow is down with him. And that's not a bad move kicking with the breeze. His best forward in the square. O'Connell being opposed by Bell at the boundary throw-in. Aerial ping-pong out there. Bell was held. Penny has it. Further afield it goes to Grasso. Bit of a fight behind play now between Evans and Grasso. Chance in here for Han, who then collided with Higgins. Gee, they've made a real blotch of things this afternoon. It's like a team of players who have never played together before, Claremont. The ball goes towards the half-forward line. Beresford did well to get in front. Knocked out cleverly by Burton to Peniza. Peniza's hand pass is a good one to Han. Han from centre wing can look to half-forward. They're still mucking around. Beresford has it now. He goes long and more directly towards the, set, the goal square. Hutton was up in front. It comes to Bell, who roved it pretty well. Gandini comes in. No pressure whatsoever. Good poor hand pass. Comes towards Grasso. Gandini a chance. Knocks it on towards Holmes. It's a bit slippery. And he was interfered with. No kick. Holmes pulled off it. Gives Roland a chance. Roland with a horrible kick towards half forward. Hetherington showing great courage. Backed into the pack. The oh. kick again off, Langford, off the side of Langford's boot. Chance for Passeri. Good, Good shepherd. shepherd provided by Grasso. Passeri went backward of the play when he didn't need to. Down in the direction of Menangola. And the ball slips away from him. And over the line and out of play. Well, both sides finding it very difficult to get past the half forward lines. And of course Claremont have got to do that in this quarter. Because they're kicking with the breeze. And trailing by 25 points. Yeah, well said the ball slipped away. This game could be slipping away from Claremont. Retzlaff. On it goes, Gandini hooks it across his body, inside centre half forward. Lewis coming to meet the ball with good uh, courage. Kick not as good though for Roland. Oh. He slaps it wide, hand confronted by Retzlaff, gets around him and goes for the short pass. Oh. David O'Connell up, spoiled from behind by Hedrington. The move was fraught with danger. On it goes to Retzlaff. Swans on the move again. The kick square for Walker. This is the mark. Peniza put pressure on him. Now David O'Connell. Ducked into that, then he hooks it upfield and guard takes the mark in front of Bell. Good tackle by Peniza. He yeah. played on. Oh, there, he there. played on. Yeah, he went he around. Went he right around his around. mark. You can go around your mark. As soon as the umpire calls play on, then you're gone. Well, mesmerised they are at the moment, Claremont. There's no system in their football at all. And this is the quarter when they need to do something. Bell. 
O'Connell got the second chance and knocked it on. Mitchell and Penny are there. Mitchell in front, close to the boundary. Harassed by Penny. Back comes Mitchell, runs into Don Holmes. Pulls Don Holmes off the football. Oh, Kicked in field by Evans. Up goes uh, Pike. With him for Siri. On the ground, it's Roland, but uh, he's got it now. It came off David O'Connell. There's a long kick on goal. Oh. It's home. Oh, push in the square. Oh, there sure was. Yep. Eaton should have got a free kick. Well, there's a lot of kicks that went unnoticed in that passage of play. But the result was a goal to Claremont, and they needed it badly. So the margin now, 75 plays 56. It's back to 19 points. And it's the first time we've seen a direct move by Claremont. They've been going sideways, backwards, all over the place. And this time, Roland says, I'm going to do it all myself. Have Straight a look at this, though, Keith. Have a look at this. There's the long kick into the square. And uh, yeah, in pushed the out. Of the back. Pushed out and could have been a free kick. Silly play by Hutton. Centre bounce, 56 plays 75. It's 19 points as Cormac takes the ball cleverly, but is run down by Narkel. Play on is the call, and we're going to have a bounce. Oh, tough call on Claremont. Holding the ball was the decision. They work it wide, Swans. Grasso is loose. Now they go wider still towards Sir Davy, but Burton got there in the nick of time and almost took the mark. Davy won't give in, we know that. In he goes on top of Burton. Together they tie it up and we'll have a bounce down. But gee, you have to admire Sean Davey. The tasks that he has given week after week. Here he is, not fighting out of his division today, but quite willing to go the 15 rounds. Higgins. The knock is sharked by Davey. Davey in towards the pocket, looking for Strempel. Lewis gets in front, is caught from behind. Gets it to Peniza, who's been a reliable defender this afternoon under a fair bit of pressure. Burton went without it, then got tied up with Lewis. They get it towards the boundary line, and the throw will take place just outside 50 metres. To emphasise that point you made about a team that hasn't played together before, how many times have we seen Claremont players mess each other up, as they did then? Higgins versus Strempel. Crucial Whoop. minutes now. Wrong. If, if Swans can hold Claremont out here, surely they must go on to win the Premiership. Claremont have to start some make, to make some ground on the scoreboard. Oh. O'Connell up close to the line, and the throw will take place just inside Claremont's, uh, sorry, Swan District's forward line. Well, that looked like a pretty blatant push in the back on a Claremont player then. It's 12-3 to 8-8, Swan District's lead, and we're now eight minutes into the third quarter of the grand final. Guard not able to get it away cleanly. Hetherington, I think it is, who was caught. Play allowed to go on. Hand shovels it on to Mitchell. Took too long. Run down from behind. Now Pike has it. Right across to O'Connell. O'Connell's hurry kick. No, the umpire's whistle is gone. Something happened behind play, and it'll be a Swans kick. Oh, that's a handy one because Claremont in a winning position, position there. Goal scoring position. Evans had the ball clear at half forward. Don Holmes limps out of the pack. Pasiri has the free kick. Towards centre half forward, it's all Higgins. Whoops, you wonder what's that elbow, my boy. Higgins, hand pass to Pike, confronted by Narkel. Oh, that was ordinary. Dangerous hand pass for Cormac. Now Peniza with work to do, but Pike backs him up again. There's a hand pass to Beresford. Beresford goes for a gallop on the outer side of the ground. The kick to half forward, up goes Retzlaff to spoil Evans. It gets good applause from the Swan supporters. He's a good player today, Brendan Retzlaff, yes, as he has yeah. most of the season. Spotted well in defence, hasn't he? I don't think he was a defender when he came to Swans. And he shadowed Tony Evans all afternoon. Bell and O'Connell, Hetherington from the side, clean possession, good work out of the ruck by Kim Hetherington. The foot pass, though, wasn't equal to the occasion. The boundary throw in short of left half forward for Swans. That was uh, to Swans' advantage, though. He made 30 or 40 metres, and it is in the last quarter that Swans will have the breeze. So it's Claremont really have got the work to do, but if Swans go too defensive, they'll dig a hole for themselves. That looked like Dudley Moore in the crowd, but of course it wasn't. This is Walker. Neat hand pass to Langsford from the point of the square for Strempel. It's wide of him and Lewis. Oops. Almost a juggled mark. Strempel <laughs> on all fours. Couldn't bring it in. Don Holmes was pushed. But the umpire says throw it in. I reckon he'd win a crawling race. Strempel. <laughs> he was after it. You don't make a lot of ground that way. It's Higgins and Strempel. Two tough men of football. Crumbs to Evans. Hooks it across his body. Bounces in front of Roland, with him out there, and interfered with was Gandini. Narco gets a hand pass to Bell. Bell goes for the pass, Pike's got to mark this. He knocks it away from Holmes. Walker's got the crumbs, he's pulled down by Burton. The series got it again. Inboard to Retzlaff from Pike, who's caught him. Play on the call, Beresford tackled by Holmes. Again for Siri, this time he overruns it. It's ferocious and fierce out there as Davy sockets to the boundary. A boundary throw in the left full forward pocket. 
supporters are crying for a free kick. Oh, well, they had to be holding the ball. That was beautiful it. roving, though. Walker was tackled, but again, it was a beautiful exhibition of roving. Higgins wins a decisive knock to the side of the pack. Narkel is claimed by Thorne. Narkel gets it back to Langsford. Langsford, high kick. Davey in best position. Almost got a mark. Maybe he was called not 10. Chance for Claremont now. Oh, There's a left. trip. And the free kick is with hand. Mark Hand cheers from the crowd. has been a good player this afternoon. Poor kick. Swans have the numbers three to one. It's with Bell. Bell gets it backward of the play. Men and goal are looking for something. He goes long. Good kick. Strickle in front. Oh, that is a very good mark indeed. He was like a big tarantula, wasn't he? But he got there. Well, he had the height advantage in that contest, but it was beautifully kicked by Menegola. Oh, he got right over the top of Burton. And, uh, gee, he's taken some good marks today. The best I've seen in Mark Shane Strample. Claremont tended him back there. They needed someone to crash back into him. Goal here would be telling. Very telling. Four to Strimple, all at that end of the ground. And 13 to Swan. They're 13-3. Claremont are 8-8. 12 minutes into the third quarter. And you mustn't minimise the work of Sean Davey at centre-half forward. No stylist, but gee, he's putting some pressure on. He's absolutely desperation personified. He's chasing, smothering, and doing all the hard work and allowing other players to do uh, the, the fancy bit. And that's Shane Strempel, who missed uh, so many goals last week, but he hasn't missed them today. And uh, he's been a good backup for Bell in the ruck in the second quarter. A cuddling a little teddy bear then, wasn't it? There's the bounce. Higgins, he's uh, playing for his football life out there, Higgins. Thorne couldn't pick it up. Tackled by Langsford. Pretty tough in there. Langsford's on the bottom of that with Peter Thorne two courageous veterans of league football here in WA. Langsford will remember the 1984 grand final, the last time that uh, Swans beat Claremont in a grand final. Now, let's see what Claremont got up forward. David O'Connell centre half forward, Peter Mann's full forward. The forward line's pretty open, a quick takeaway here. In Give fact, him a not, chance. Sorry, Keith, 1983 that was, 84. It was um, Eastry Mantle who Swans defeated. Again, it's just outside the circle, guard, hooks it across his body, it travels inside half forward, Hetherington and David O'Connell like two paces out there, but Holmes picks it up, picks it right across the field, Grasso, the Sandover medalist has got it, Hutton's after him, good shepherding though by Eaton, the kick up to Wog, he's 20 metres in the clear, he's got several options, he goes for the wrong one, Lewis intercepted, short circuit of the pass, in comes Menegola, he's clever, that's a good kick too, it's meant for Strempel, Owens is behind, Strempel in front, couldn't mark, Walk of the crumbs, he's dangerous. There's the hook on goal, but he's offline this time, and it will go out. No, Peniza kept it in. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. No. I thought it rolled out, but the umpire was a bit slow with the whistle. Good understanding between Don Holmes and uh, Mick Grasso in defence, with Don Holmes going right across the ground. Higgins to the side of the pack. Guard went without it. Could have interfered with Narkel. Narkel comes back into the contest, and there'll be another throw in. Swans are really playing it hard now. I think they're sensing victory. 25 uh, points is the margin. Yes, they've got the centre victory. There's no doubt about that, Keith. And they're going in harder now than I think at any stage of the game. Higgins gets the ball clear, but straight down to Wog. Back on goal. Bounces away from Strempel and into the post. Oh, 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 I think it bounced back into play. No, it hit the post. Oh, did it? Came back into play, but after it hit the post. Bit of worry on the faces of the Claremont, Claremont players now. There's the kick into play from Owens. It's a good kick too. Hand. He's been one of their best players, one of their few very good players. He's called a play on now as he goes towards Evans. He needs to mark it. Mark. Definitely a mark. Retzlaff on top of him. 16 kicks to mark Hand. Yeah, he's been a good player. Possibly the best player, Roland and Hand. Towards Thorne. It was a good kick. Peter Thorne coming in for his fifth kick. Towards Hutton, who has hardly had a kick. That should have been interference, and it is. Blatant. The free kick is to John Hutton. Hasn't kicked a goal. Playing it full forward. Or on the forward line. He's a beautiful kicker of the football wall, and he has that northwester right at his back here. Well, we and saw, I'm going to suggest you'll get the distance, OK? The ball would be a little bit heavy, of course, but we saw Kevin Mitchell kick a goal from not much closer than this. He kicks from just outside 50. He did get the distance, Ooh, had it gone long straight. Kick. Long kick. And what's been paid? He's called a play on. How play can it be on. play on? It had to be a mark. Oh, no, the boundary umpire, I'm sorry, is indicating it was out. Well, it had to be out on the full or a mark, surely. Well played by O'Connell for mine. He grabbed it and just went back. And it didn't go out there, I can assure you. It was right alongside the post. 
Bell is up. Right now. Connell over the top. The ball kicked clear, I think, by Penny. This is Narkel. Gets it back towards Og. Og was cornered. Down towards Gandini, who positioned his body well, looking for the free kick, but it wasn't forthcoming. Well, if the trend of games, Swan District's games this season, is to continue, that trend was spelled out for us statistically by Ken Casella's pre-game, where they've outscored teams in 17 of the 23 games they've played this season in the second half. They really do have the premiership at their mercy here. They're in front by 25 points, and we're into the second half as the ball goes towards half forward, and Burton takes the mark. And a very clever juggled mark. Crowd don't agree, but there's no doubt about it. He needs to use this ball straight down the middle. He goes sideways again. Well, Narkel intercepting, but he couldn't spoil Higgins. Now he can kick a footy. Higgins to centre half forward. Pack develops. Man! Oh, from behind, he almost claimed it. Tried to knock it on. Good work by Hetherington, though. Committed his body. Evans loses his footing. Shovels it out. Cormax there. Knocked away, though, by Don Holmes. Hutton's there for Claremont. He keeps it in play. It's Cormac and Hetherington who get mixed up, or is it Bell? Bell it is. Kicked on by O'Connell, but it's out of bounds on the pool. Well, they can't make much headway. No. And uh, they're, they're just falling down badly. They're, they're not forward, using the they? ball long enough, Trev. They've got to stop this sideway play. Now they're in a desperate situation and be direct. David Ogg misses the mark. He was put under pressure by Mitchell. Mitchell kicks across the ground towards half forward. Peter Mann's in the van. Mann's got it. Tackled strongly by Gow. Grasso, little toe poke across the ground, was very intelligent. Roland leads in the race, he though. He needs some help. With him there is Gandini. Guard has got it. Confronted by Grasso. Oh, he made right no attempt. Absolutely weak performance by Jeremy Guard. He had to do something strong. You've got to make an attempt to get rid of it. He didn't do that. Grasso's got the kick. He kicks to half forward. Pike. Oh, good yeah, mark. Good Very mark. clever mark, yeah. indeed. They're hard to take. That's oh. a terrible kick, but it'll find the mark in the captain hand. As Ken Casilla said, one of the best on the ground, Evans, Played. Thorne, still outside 50, kick to the top of the square, there is O'Connell, couldn't hold the mark, at the back it's Don Holmes running onto it, but he forces it through for a behind. But they've got to do that more now, Claremont, they've got to bomb the ball into the square, because they do that, and they'll put enormous pressure on Swans, and while they keep going sideways, they allow the Swans defenders to get into position behind play. Scott about to come on, and it wouldn't surprise me if he went into attack, 17 scoring shots apiece and the margin is 25 points in favour of Swan Districts. The kick towards centre wing and Andy Holmes. The situation in which Andy Holmes is likely to run amok this. There goes Narkel kicking towards half forward. What a good kick too. A long kick. Oh, that's and brilliant. Strimple has been paid the mark as he should have been. He's just too tall and too strong. One of the big faults of Peter Owens while is that he, he goes the mark. He's not a good spoiler, a good aerialist, but not a good spoiler. And on that occasion, he should have been destroying the ball. He tried to outmark Strempel. He's paid the penalty. 19 minutes into the third quarter. Strempel goes for his fifth. It's pretty close. He's just missed it. Shaved the post. Well, it's one that Swans needed, that one, to really put them in an almost unassailable position. I wouldn't yeah. mind being in Swans' position now, Keith. No, but uh, there's still plenty of time and enough scoring potential for Claremont to win the game. 20 minutes gone. Claremont have kicked one goal with a breeze. There's a go. Evans and Narkel. Evans wins out. Brilliant pass. Mitchell couldn't hold it. Socket away from Penny by Lewis. Gow and Mann are close to the boundary. Ooh. Boundary throw in. <laughs> Good tough defender, Paul Gow. Yeah, he is, and he's very strong. And he needed to be strong then. He was in between two Claremont players. Talented centre half forward, too, is Peter Mann been a good duel that man's done pretty well so far it's bell and man who do the ruck work gow over the top wins the tap david Ogg clears it for swans it's back to half forward pack develops minagola <laughs> almost a specky miles Riley. walker knocked it on panizza and strempel on a collision course down goes panizza ball squirts out to home this is what he likes have a look at this around oh, the oh, corner oh, oh, oh what beautiful oh, oh he loves him oh, and he's down he's been put down by higgins Well, they don't think so, well. No, I must admit, I only saw the, the aftermath, and Vernon is about to make a report, so I think you might have been right, actually. It's a furious encounter, this. It's what, it's what Claremont needed. Yeah. Well, it might stir them up. But let's go, oh, some still some vicious uh, work being done in the Here back. Is, let's have a look at the goal, Keith. Yeah, that was superb roving by Walker to set this up. We'll have another look in a moment. Well, you'll see the roving of Walker, which has been absolutely outstanding reading the ball off hands. 
He hasn't always made the best use of the ball, but he's roving and collecting ball off hands, and uh, there's Menengola in there. There's the beautiful roving of Walker, punching it to his own advantage. Now, Strempel comes up. Peniza doesn't play the ball. There's Walker again getting it out in the position of Andy Holmes, and have a look at that for a goal. Trevor said he loves this type of stuff, and he's made no mistake. What happened after that, of course, was that Peter Higgins moved in, and look at Greg Walker. Higgins has uh, been reported, there's no now. doubt about that. Two umpires. We didn't actually see it on television, but obviously two umpires felt they had a pretty good view I've of it. I've got the feeling, while there were other reports made by Phil O'Reilly. He talks again with uh, Peter Higgins, but I think O'Reilly did uh, take some other numbers. Well, will that lift Claremont? What effect will this have on? It's something that uh, may be that, uh, Higgins, that maybe Higgins thought that he had to do something to try and rescue this game for Claremont, and that was it. The margin is 32 points in favour of Swan Districts. 22 minutes into the third quarter, it would take a remarkable transformation now if Claremont were to get back into this game. Guard gets the ball from the Higgins knock towards the outer side. Backing his judgment is Retzlaff. Going with him was Mitchell. He's caught. He's holding the ball. And they're called to play on. Taken by uh, by Cormac towards Scott, who has come onto the ground and is playing in the forward line. Eaton gets it to Hetherington. Hetherington is under pressure, but did pretty well. Rollins crashed into the pack. Ball spills towards Passeri. He's under pressure. Puts it further towards centre wing. Lewis kicks the ball off the ground, but not very accurately. In comes Walker. Play. In comes, turns comes Passeri. Passeri kicks to the half forward line. And Strimple, courage by Burton. In comes Holmes on his hell. Not a bad thing, perhaps, for Claremont. A lovely piece of roving by Andy Holmes has been rewarded. From this week's crowd came to sell us, isn't it? It certainly is, and I think Claremont are gone. He needs someone short, does Andy Holmes. I don't think he'll make the distance from there. Well, he's just kicked a freak snap goal from out here. And now he has a, ch a set shot. It's a very good kick again. I reckon he's got it. No, Owens might have touched. Oh. No, he didn't. He's got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Claremont disputing it, third to Andy Holmes, but Claremont would be well advised to save their energy and concentrate on putting some football together. Well, Andy Holmes, unsighted in the first half, played on Mark Hand, where he was given a lesson on the wing, but hasn't he bounced back in this quarter? He's kicked three goals in this quarter, Andy Holmes, and that an absolute gem. From about 53 metres, a long kick for anybody, certainly Andy Holmes, and he sneaks it through by about a metre, and that is a couple of telling blows going in to about the 25-minute mark. Well, that last 10 minutes of the second quarter, I think, is where Swan set this up. They've continued on this third term. For Siri, Grasso on the run. Brilliant foot pass for David Ogg. Right half forward. They're running amok now, Swans. Running amok over Claremont. There's the kick to full forward. Menegola. Up he goes. Davey was there too. Thumbs come down to hand. Over the top. It was meant for Cormac. Intercepting was Gandini. Now Walker. There's a free kick being put, picked out. Right. Be taken by Cormac. No, no. to kick it too. Look at it. Swans are playing like men possessed. Narkle and hand. Hand knocks it away. Then hang on to Narkle for a moment. Now he's over the top of him. And Narkle to get the free kick. I feel the umpiring has settled down a bit in the second half. Right across the ground to the Sandover medalist, Grasso. Grasso, brilliant foot pass. Oh, that is supreme. Well, David Ogg's on the end of it. Lewis making the cardinal that's in there taking his eye off the ball. David Ogg shooting for goal at the 24-minute mark of the third quarter. The margin has blown out to 38 points. Hog from 50 metres. Has got another one. Swans are running riot. The second to Hog. Set up by Grasso. And uh, Claremont now getting well and truly out of their depth. Here's the replay of it. As we welcome our metropolitan viewers, here's a replay of the last goal to Swan Districts. Og is the player who kicks the goal, and the margin has blown out to 44 points.
It is a massive lead to Swan Districts. They have kicked five goals into the wind in this quarter and Claremont have managed only one with it. That followed a sec seven goal second term as Swans go forward again. Taken by Langsford from Penny. Puts it out in front of Menangola. Scott is off in pursuit. He's been used at both ends of the ground with little effect. Gandini gets rid of hand. Back in towards full forward and Strempel, who's been a star at this end of the ground at least with four goals. Gandini acknowledges the poor kick and the throw will take place at left ball forward. And of course, it's big 16 5 Swan Districts, 101. Claremont are 8 9 57, 26 minutes into the third quarter. And I'm going to say, while sorry to butt in, that Ken Bell has done it again as far as the rucking is concerned. This time it's Strempel. Fitzgerald nudged him out. Scott was over the top of the fist. A boundary throw in, left full forward. Strempel, as Wally mentioned, has been outstanding with four goals. Andy Holmes, three. One quarter. of them the best we've seen this season. And two apiece to Walker and David Ogg. They're the Swans goal kickers, the main one. Fitzgerald slaps at the thorn. Whistle has sounded. Advantage rule paid. Hand being one of the best on the ground to Lewis. Lewis away he goes through defence, but again it's indecision. Forehand past the pike. He was under pressure, but he got a push oh, from Pasiri. Very lucky. He'll indeed. take the kick. We've seen worse than that. Go unpenalised today. Evans has kicked two goals for Claremont. He's their leading goal kicker, which gives you some idea of their poor forward play. Who wants the footy? Who wants the footy? Pike goes out very wide. Langsford flew, but too early. Hands got it. Makes ground through the wing. Kicks towards full forward. Higgins in front of Hetherington. On the ground, Bell tackles strongly. Dispossessed. Picked up there by Higgins. His hip hooked towards the goal square has been marked by Eaton. Swans can do no wrong now. This has been put out in front of Brendan Retzlaff. Thorns in pursuit. Retzlaff gets his kick in. Good kick too to Pasiri, who marks in front of Pike. Another big performance by Jeff Pasiri today. Yes, he's got on top of Don Pike. The further the game's gone, and Menegola takes a good mark. Evans coming over the top. You'd be Menegola. proud of the way they're playing, Keith, oh, wouldn't you? Yes. Sorry, well. Very hard to pick their best player. Been a very even performance. Menegola to Penny. Now they're starting to handle the ball very surely, much as they have done in the last halves, uh, much of this last round. Kicks long to centre-half forward and Gandini. Kill no him. one wanted to check him. Back he goes from 50 metres. Could this be another? I think it is. Maybe not. Miles, oh, great mark. mark. <laughs> great mark, Jeff Miles. He's played on foolishly. His disposal has been appalling this afternoon. He gets the ball out wide. Hand is the player out there he's looking for. And they get distance, clear it outside 50. And the throw will take place at left half forward for Swan District. You've got to remember that Swans are kicking into the breeze in this, uh, in this uh, third quarter. And uh, Claremont, with the breeze, needed to kick goals to get back into the game in this quarter. They've lost by one to five so far. Yes, they've kicked only one. Han has been their best player clearly this afternoon. He res his hand pass results in this ball going wide to the guard. Guard in turn onto Thorne. It wasn't a good hand pass. He had to wait for it. It goes back now to Han. Han riding the boundary on the other side of the ground. Kicks towards centre half four, but they've got nothing up there. Owens is playing there now. In comes Gow. Yeah, was it? Yeah, it was taken table. high for the umpteenth time this afternoon. We had blood and all over him going into half time. Three quarter time. Great third quarter from Swans, following on from a very good second term, and they lead 16-5, 101 to 8-9-57. The margin is 44 points, and that surely is a premiership winning lead. Those comments from Wally Foreman. Yes, they've turned it around. Claremont led by seven at quarter time. It was a 26-point turnaround of the second quarter when Swans booted, from, went from 4-1 to 11-3, seven goals, two in that second term. They led by 19 points at halftime, and now they lead by 44. And full marks to the West Australian public who've come out in force today to watch, well, what at times has been a fairly vicious and hard-fought grand final, and that shows on the face of Paul Gow, the centre-half back. Sorry, Keith, I just spat on his, on his hand. 16-5, <laughs> <laughs> Claremont are 8 9 57. Most likely, most likely wouldn't complain about anything at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I saw you just wipe it off and didn't even mention Not it. that the footy's got anything to do with that. 16 5 101 to 8 9 57. It's been an exciting day. Claremont haven't produced the football and they've got a Herculean job ahead of them now to get back into this game. Well, our viewers from around the metropolitan area joined us about five minutes before three quarter time. Let's take you back now and have a look at some of the wonderful highlights of what has been a great grand final. Sorry, man. There, in comes Don Holmes. He went without it. Han has it. 
is dispossessed oh, by Holmes. Hey. That was well played by Don Holmes. Terrible kick. Well taken, though, by Menegola. Off it goes to Don Holmes, who started well. Short kick looking for Strempel is a beauty. And Strempel will shoot from 50 metres. Now, Strempel with a light, well, not a light, with a nor'westerly breeze to contend with, gets just inside 50. It's a good kick. It's the first goal of the game to Swans. Strempel opens the scoring in the 1990 Grand Final. Up goes oh, David O'Connell, wins the tap, brings it down for guard. He got a fickle bounce. Thorne's got it in the right full forward pocket. That's a snap that they'll remember for a long time in Claremont. That's a beauty. Yeah, will fly. Choose into the back of man, I thought. Bayon says the umpire. Og knocks it on. In the road, though, Peniza. Got a trip. Oh. Bayon again. Lewis gets it away to guard. On it goes to Evans from 50 metres out. Evans the rover. The kick is into the square. Gold grass though, that he interfered with Cormac. Goal. It's off the boot of Cormac. It's a goal. Hand pass upfield. David Og got a good bounce. Well tackled by Beresford. Peniza put Walker under pressure. That comes to Pasiri in the right full forward pocket. Going back with a flight, Miles. Did he touch it? Oh. I don't think he did. No. Swans have been very wasteful, you know. They've run into two open goals in the last couple of minutes. Well, they've had only 12 scoring shots to Claremont's 14, and they're in front. Here's another chance for Retzlaff to hammer home the advantage. He has, I think. It's a good kick from Retzlaff. That's the 10th to Swans. Back it goes to, man, to Han. Han goes on to Thorne. He's gone, holding the ball. Oh, dear. That is superb tackling. Very vicious. Run. That really is superb tackling. Swans' that confidence is growing as the game goes on. Pedrington drives to the half-forward line where Swans have a chance. Hutton did well. Walker has the ball. No one in the square. The bounce is crucial. It's a good bounce, a kind bounce for Swans. And Swans have got a victory set up here. Yes, Wally, they certainly have. 16-5, 101, 8, 9, 57. We've been lucky with the weather so far. One brief shower, and since then, the western sky has lightened up a little. Over towards the east, where that rain came, is going now. It really is dark, and there's plenty of showers out there. But as John Todd lays down the law, Swan District's in the box seat to win the flag. They won consecutive premierships, 82, 83, 84, and they're in line to beat, Swan, to beat Claremont for the third consecutive time in grand finals, having beaten Claremont in 82 and 83. Ken Casellas, some of the leading kick-getters to three-quarter time. Well, surprisingly, a Claremont player is the leading kick-getter on the field, uh, but that's mainly because uh, Mark Hand, the Claremont captain, has been outstanding on a wing throughout the afternoon, and Swan Districts have had a far greater perform a level performance, whereas Claremont have got several players well below par. At three-quarter time, Mark Hand, six marks, 19 kicks. He had 10 kicks in the third quarter, and he's also made nine effective hand passes. Uh, looking at some of the other Claremont players, Scott Rowland in the centre has had 16 kicks. Uh, further down, the Thorn has had seven kicks only, Guards had eight only, Cormac's had nine, Evans has had ten, Mann's had eight all in the first half, and then in defence, Penis has had nine kicks for Swans, Mick Grasso on a half-back flank, five marks and 16 kicks, Philip Narkles had nine kicks and five effective hand passes, Sean Menangola's, uh, Todd Menangola has had nine, Og has had 12 kicks, and Jeff Passiri, a very good wingman, he's beaten Don Pike, he's had 14 kicks. Red Hutton leaves the ground, surprise inclusion today by Swans, Bell on the ball has been supreme in the under-19s grand final. West Perth with the victors over Claremont. So look out next year, well. And in the reserves, Claremont have defeated South Fremantle. Have we got time for the Andy Holmes goal? No, we haven't. It's going to be the final quarter here. Andy Holmes' goal was superb. We may get a chance to show you that during the course of this last term. Fitzgerald to centre-half forward. Owens in the forward pocket. The last quarter of the grand final, live on ABC TV from Subiaco Oval. It's umpire Phil O'Reilly who gets it underway. Bell wins the tap through the hands of Roland. Picked up by Bell. Kicks inside to the half forward. Beresford's there with Walker. Burton coming across to Shepard to give Beresford some time. He wanted a lot of time too. The kick finally lands on the half back line. Lewis and Gandini were worried about each other and pushed over by Narkel. The big wholesale changes in the Claremont lineup. Owens into a forward pocket. Hutton full forward. Fitzgerald to centre half forward. They're desperate moves for mine, Keith. Yeah, Miles Man. is playing at fullback. Man won that tap. Narkel with hand. Ball on the ground. Pike dives in with uh, Penny. He's been a tough defender today, Danny Penny. He sorted a couple out through the course of the game. I think Menangola is playing centre half forward, opposed by Burton. 101 plays 57. Swans in the box seat. Man at close quarters to hand. Hand across his body. Grasso got a finger in that. And it's a boundary throw in. 
Members side of the ground, the Brollies are up again, light rain falling. I suppose Swans have dispelled any doubt about their ability to play in, in the damp and wet weather. Uh, an outstanding third quarter of football. You wouldn't have got your hair wet though, Keith, there wasn't much rain. Man, been enough to make the ball a bit slippery. Yes, it was slippery. Roland got it away to Man. Man pumps it up to half forward. Gow got into the back of Fitzgerald. Oh, He'll take dear. the free kick, I'm Robbie not sure Fitzgerald. About that. I thought he held ground. There's the kick into the pocket. Out comes Hutton. Eaten over the top of him. Cormac the crumbs. He snapped one. It's a beauty. Cormac running into the right full forward pocket. Brings up his first goal of the match. Can Claremont come back from here, Keith? Well, there's time. There's no doubt that there's time, Trevor. And uh, I think the determination should be there because, after all, it is a grand final. And we just haven't seen enough of Cormac and Thorne today. Thorne has been very indecisive. And Cormac has flashed in mainly in the first half. But that's exactly what Claremont have got to do. They've been very wasteful for the greater part of the day. The times they've had the breeze, they've just wasted it. But on that occasion, we saw Thorne roving at his very best. Uh, uh, Cormac, I should say. Well, they've been dependent on snapshots for goal. And you can't win, go win uh, games of football with snapshots. As the ball runs towards Mitchell, he hasn't been effective this afternoon. It's knocked away from him by Passiri. Chance now for guard. He gets a sweeping hand pass to Higgins, who's on report. Higgins kicks the ball inside 50. Hutton was dragged down. Play allowed to go on. In there is Evans. With him is Gow. It's socket away by Eaton. That gives Langsford the run of the ball. Grasso wants it wide, and that's the direction it goes. He taps it to his own advantage. In fact, it's happy for it to go out of play. Well, I thought he should have taken the mark. I he could have, I think, couldn't I, he? I think he was in good enough position to take the mark. He, and if Swans go do defensive, then they will play into Claremont's hands. Throw in at left half forward for Claremont. Mitchell takes clean possession. The hand pass was behind for Nizza, but he was able to recover it. He drives back towards centre half forward. Owen sets himself, proposed by Hetherington. Chance for Hutton at ground level. Now it's with Evans. Offline. They're going to have to make the most of every opportunity, Claremont, because it'll only take one goal at the other end to take the sting out of their challenge. Well, they're kicking... Uh, how's that breeze going over there? It's a there? fluctuating breeze, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It'll be the same. Watch the windsock yeah. to the left. That's a better indication, yeah, I think. Yeah, I think the breeze is the northwester. As it has been throughout the day, Gow drags the ball to the front of the pack, gets it towards Holmes. Back goes Cormac to claim him. That ball go out. Was it deliberate? No. Well, he was under pressure, wasn't he? There's not much you could do about that. Do you reckon flags are fibbers, do you? Well? Sometimes they are, Trev, yeah. They make up their own minds. And sometimes the devils. They're, they're females. <laughs> Bell to the front of the pack. Good luck. I've got to go home now, don't I? I forgot. That's on the, the floor almost. No, I think it was off the higher part of the leg, but it was close. Yep. Sometimes the, it can be deceiving too. That, that scoreboard is very high and the, the wind velocity at ground level can be a bit different. Okay, Bell wins the tap and he hits it straight to Pike. Pike goes defensively to Han. Han screws it towards the top of the square. Hutton punched away by Eaton into the path of Cormac. He kicked the last one, dispossessed by Eaton. Chance for Evans. Hand pass to Thorne. Thorne snap at goal is offline. He knows he should have done better. Well, I reckon uh, Claremont uh, are going in very hard at the moment and Swans have just slackened a little for mine. Paul Gow looks like a gladiator who lost, but he hasn't today. He played a great game. He kicks into the pocket and finds Don Holmes. There could be a couple of farewell performances today. Don Holmes, Don Langsford. Could they be on their last game? Possible. There's the kick to half back. Good mark by Peter Mann. We haven't seen enough of that today either. That good, beautiful high marking from Mann. Swans have lifted, uh, Claremont have lifted. He's made space there and ground. The kick towards the top of the square. Gow up in front, one hand. Crump come down to Cormac, he wanted too long. Comes to Eaton, wide of the mark for Narkel. Picked up by hand, tried to strike Narkel, couldn't do that. Play on the call. A little bit lucky there. Should have been a goal, Cormac messed You've up. You've got to play to the whistle. You must play to the whistle. And Don Holmes trying to umpire the game and lucky to get out of that. Bounce down about 40 metres out from Claremont's goal, straight down to Hutton, and it goes out on the bounce. Well, they're pressing Claremont. Yes, but they've had a couple of chances to kick goals, Keith, and Thorne missed a sitter. Yeah, well, a they relatively are pressing. easy run. They are pressing, they've got pressure on, and uh, Brent Hutton now coming around the boundary line. Todd, Todd's obviously going to bottle it up as best he can, throw in it right full forward. Bell in front to the front of the pack. Thorne wanted two chances again. I know it was a hard one. Comes down to, to Han. Han into the pocket. Evans is the only player there. And Bell comes over the top comfortably and gets it out of play. See, the work, the effective work done by Bell is incredible. He's almost been the player of the finals, yes. I would suggest. Yeah, he has. He just not let any Ruckman beat him. And he's won on most occasions. Here he is again, opposed by Fitzgerald, who gets the ball to the side of the pack. Taken by Retzlaff. Oh. He's holding the ball. What a bit. 
Oh, he oh. must have been. Well, he was holding the ball first, then pushed in the back. And maybe the umpire got himself into a bit of a bind then. I think the umpire was hoping it would go out, and it did eventually. The sun, sun is out. It's a sun shower at CB Oval now. Bell and Fitzgerald again. This time, Claremont have another chance through hand. Play on the call. Holmes appeared to be taken high. Now it's knocked wide of the pack by Langsford, taken by Penny, and Swans will get out of trouble. Mann and Higgins both <laughs> took their eyes off the ball. Mann is dispossessed. Lewis has the run of it. If it'll sit up for him, it won't. Gee, they've had trouble all day this afternoon. Claremont just not been able to do anything with the ball. Hand waited for it. Higgins has it. He knows what he wants to do. He wants to kick it. Mann does eventually. Inside 50 metres, but it's all Swan Districts and Strempel who really has played well at this end of the ground. He kicked four goals up there at full forward, three in the first quarter, one in the third. Now he's back there, saving them in defence. Oh, Terrible dear, kick dear. off What's the side of here? the boot. Peneza got it. Second attempt. Sun could have been in his eyes, which is incredible. There's the kick across the ground. The target is Cormac. Hetherington arrives late into the oh, back of Cormac. Good. That was a very nah, was loose bit of unfiring. He was going for the ball. And he died only for the ball. Evans screws it across his body. Langsford got a fist into that. Cormac's there again, tackled by Eaton. Play oh. on the oh. call. Gee whiz, they're lucky at the moment, Swans. They're getting away with murder. This is Hutton. Hand pass out wide to Panizza. He fumbled, scrambles a kick forward, and it lands with Eaton, who should have marked. He's tackled by Cormac. Holmes is uh, scragged. Langsford gets it out to uh, Retzlaff. Retzlaff kicks it upfield in the path of Grasso. He dives in on top of it, then pushes it out. He had to. Gandini tackle from behind. Oh, too high. Gee. Too high. After all that he let go. Well, he only let one go for mine. I don't agree with the one where Hetherington spoiled. He was going for the ball, and you would have seen his eyes only for the ball. The kick towards centre wing. Davies in front. Nudged underneath it by Higgins, but he's been paid the mark. Higgins goes for the foot pass. This is Evans now in the middle of the ground. Claremont have done all the attacking. Roland back to Evans. He's on the run. He's going to go for home from 55 metres. It won't reach. Uh, going back, Fitzgerald's taken a beauty. A great mark under pressure. Well, there's no doubt about the endeavour of Claremont here. They're pressing very hard. First eight minutes of this quarter had belonged to the Tigers. And if they can keep this pressure up, then they've got to score goals. Swans are finding it very difficult to get a possession. Swans have had a, a more vigorous campaign in this final series. Fitzgerald kicks it. Yes. Good kick. They're back in the hunt, Claremont. Swans are 16-5, 101. Claremont at 10-11, 71. 30 points the margin. Eight and a half minutes gone. And there's Evans streaming through centre half forward and sets it up beautifully for Fitzgerald. Now playing at centre half forward. And a good, strong mark. The pressure comes from behind. He never took his eye off the ball. But obviously, Jared Neesham has said to his side, you're in a grand final. You mustn't die. We'll make some moves and see how they work. They're working OK at the moment. Man doing the ruck work. Opposed by Strempel. Man gets it down. Chance for Mitchell. Taken by Passiri. Pike has it. Gets it ahead to Thorne. On it goes to Mitchell. He goes for home. It's a good kick. It won't quite carry. Free kick. Must be. Yes. Free kick to Swan Districts to be taken by Eaton. Hutton crashed into Eaton. He was going to touch it anyway, so no real damage done, except that Claremont didn't score at all. The kick-in is intended for Penny. Oh, Interference yeah. against Fitzgerald, surely. Well, I don't know what I'm watching here. The ball close to the boundary line. Andy Holmes comes in, keeps it in play, gains 10 metres, and there'll be a throw-in on centre wing. But Fitzgerald was not allowed to go for the ball, and now Mitchell is in trouble behind play. He's going down into the pocket. Be a blow, wouldn't it? Well, he's the sort of player like Andy Holmes that could kick a couple of inspirational goals. Yeah. The sort of player that Claremont need at the moment as Mann and uh, Strempel do battle. Andy Holmes runs onto the ball, looks towards the forward pocket. Hutton is the target. It carries him. Back goes Walker, but the ball will beat all players. Throw in it. Left full forward for Swan Districts. Well, very very effective. Kick for little man, hasn't he? Very, very effective kick, that, because he's gained, what, a good 60 yeah. metres, or I think maybe 70. He's very and, deceptive. And he, and he hasn't given Claremont a chance by crossing the ball into the centre of the ground. Nearly 10 minutes gone in the final quarter. Claremont have added two goals. Swans haven't scored so far in this term but Swans still lead by 30 points. Mann tries to get it to the side of the pack. Chance in there for Panizzo. Gets it wide to Lewis. It needs to sit up. Eventually it did. He looks towards the outer side of the ground and Roland 
Roland used Brilliant. his body well to get rid of Gandini, but he's still got some work to do. Has a bounce across the half-back line. Looks towards the half-forward line. Puts it out in front of Beresford. In pursuit is Walker. Beresford waiting for it to come up. It did just well played, Greg Walker. He's still holding him, though. Should have been a kick. Thorne has it close to the line. And he gets it across to Walker. That was Strimple, I think. And Walker relieves the pressure, but he had hold of oh, Beresford he did it on well the ground. Too. And Grasso well, takes the mark. Disposed of the ball beautifully. Grasso from centre wing. Kicks back into centre half forward. Hutton up in front, but mark. Mann takes the mark. Mann starting to mark the ball in the packs. We haven't seen that for the greater part of the day. Mann possessed. Kicks back to the middle of the ground. Roland got a favourable bounce. Slick hand pass. Finds the run of Cormac. Cormac goes looking for Hutton. Cor uh, Thorne was in the way. Got a high hit tackle. Might have been from his own man, though. Guard kicks long to the square. Owens! Went one-handed with Hetherington. He's holding on to Hetherington. That should have been a free kick again. Dawn in trouble behind play. He was crashed into, and it was about the head. Hasn't had a good day, Peter Thorne. In fact, Locked I don't think I've ever seen him as indecisive as he has been today. A lot of kicks going unnoticed. Strample from the over the top was Gower. You feel? I feel that Swans have got into a very defensive mode. And the Claremont are pressing hard, and Swans are looking to get the ball out near the boundary line and forgetting about their attacking traits. It's Strample to use strength against Fitzgerald. Pike's a danger man. Weaved his way through the traffic and kicked her behind. Gee, he was dangerous when he got it. And somehow he found some space in there. With a big spiral. Hodel coming back on. He's on the run. Perhaps Todd senses a bit of danger. There's the kick for Penny. Got a hand to it with him as Mitchell. That's a boundary throw in 55 metres out now from the Claremont goal. They're going to the right hand side of your screen and against the breeze, although it's fluctuating a lot. Gandini's Gandini off. gone off. Strempel is there. Wins a decisive ruck knock. Comes straight to hand, however. Avoids one tackle. Back he goes towards goal. It'll land in the square. Hutton in front. Chance for Passiri to tidy up the Swans and out of defence they come in style. That's Og who gets the clearing kick into the centre of the ground, but it lands with Peniza. Now they need to rebound quickly. Mann was unattended, but that's covered. Hutton is loose and Og is injured. Hutton takes the mark. Og was the player who was standing Hutton in that uh, brief exchange, and he was still getting to his feet. He's Hutton. hurt his leg, but he's not serious. Short kick, don't know about that. Thorne not able to mark it. Retzlaff, the only player running to the ball. Oops, Terrible uh, kick. Hutton again. Mistakes galore by Swans at the moment. But Claremont not able to capitalise. I agree with you, Keith. They've, they've lost their desire to, yep. to attack defensively. But they've wasted yet an, about another four minutes since the last score. And at that rate, Claremont won't be able to bridge this gap. This is at the top of the square. Hetherington was up. Thorne waited for it. Off the side of the boot. And out of play on the full. I still say that... No, Claremont, sorry, touch, Keith, sorry. Claremont have got enough uh, uh, good attacking players if they stay in their forward line long enough to kick goals. They've had no forward line for most of the season. They might have the skillful players, but just not the players to kick the goals. And another point results. Tantalising, wasn't it? A little bit of bad luck for Claremont. Like Swans kicked a couple of freak ones in that third quarter. Claremont have had the chance in this quarter, but just haven't made it. This man has been... One of the best on the ground, Ken Gisellis. Eight marks he's taken. Five in the first quarter when he put his stamp of authority on the game at full forward. Now at full back. Now a policeman directing traffic. And finally he goes into the pocket for Hetherington. He can't get any deeper in defence. Dangerous kick to Ratzlaff, but it comes off. It had to be centimetre perfect because hand was closing. The Ratzlaff defensive kick. Davey up one-handed. Crashing into him was Higgins. Penny using his weight on Roland. Now back comes Roland. He's held, pulled off the ball. He comes to Andy Holmes, tackled by Mitchell. Scrambled his kick, though. Beresford got a hand to that. Walker in pursuit. Beresford cornered. Gets out of it uh, cleverly, then goes across the ground and finds Peniza. Peniza's got run from Miles. Miles to Burton. Burton runs onto it. The young player gets it back to Miles. Here come the Tigers again. Good hand pass. Man, Hutton after him. He gets around him easily. From the middle of the ground, Peter Mann kicks it long. They need a mark. Eaton and Shrimples go up, spoil each other. Evans has got the crumbs. He's got a high tackle. He's got, no, he's been caught holding the ball. Let's see it again, Keith. Yeah, I'm not sure it was high. It might have been high on the jumper. Let's have another look. There's Evans. Oh. Yeah, right across the shoulder. Should have gone the other way. Shrimples injured. Shrimple limping badly as the kick is cleared by Retzlaff to the half-back line and Higgins takes the mark. 
Claremont are starting to take some big marks in the pack. Higgins, man, we haven't seen him do it all day. Strinkle's going to have to come off. Man misses it. That oh, gives Grasso yeah. the chance to rebound, and away goes Swans. Good in Shepherd by Hodel. Well, Swans were one short in defence with Strinkle injured, but it's not going to work. And Walker takes the mark. Good good play on. The goal square's open. He's got yeah. Hutton one out down there if he wants to put it down there, but he's decided to let everyone Still get down open. there. Why doesn't he kick it long? Here's Strempel. Strempel I think off. that's the end of his grand final, but he's probably done enough. Owens yeah. goes off in front of him. Let's see what Greg Walker can do from just outside 50 metres. They haven't kicked a goal in this quarter. It's going to land in front with Davey. Very loose defence by Claremont. And this one. could be the death now. Yeah, a bit of interference took, took place behind there. And uh, it prevented the Claremont defenders getting in and making the spoil. Let's have another look there. You can't see what's happening behind. But uh, a fair bit happening there, which leaves it open for Davey. Good strong mark. Sean Davey from 30 metres. Oh, he might have missed it. So Claremont, there's Sean Strempel being carried into the rooms. So Claremont perhaps breathe again. I, I really believe this game is out of their reach, but we'll just have to wait and see. They have finished a little bit better. Thorne takes the mark in front of Langsford. Thorne pumps it up to the members' wing. Evans, good mark on the crest, opposed by Grasso. Tony Evans. Destined to play for the Eagles. That had to be centimetre perfect. Guards built it, but he's got time to recover. He's a good lead. Cormac. Well, Flamwater are going down hard. Their characters come through in this quarter. It needed to. They had a disastrous second and third terms. That's where Swan set up their victory in that second quarter. Important kick. Cormac sends it on its way. It'll come back, but not enough. Oh, almost a great mark to O'Connell. Put through by Hetherington. Horse behind. There's Kim Hetherington. Made a good game in defence. Lifted as the game progressed. He's gathered momentum, Ken, hasn't he? Yes, he's been a very sturdy and reliable defender. Kenny, been solid, finds Pasiri. He's been a star on the wing. Seven marks, kick number 15 to Jeff Pasiri. 18 minutes gone in this last quarter. Time's running out for Claremont. The kick to half back. Bell's in this with Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald almost the mark, crumbs to guard. Inboard to Roland and across the ground for Pike, who marks inside 50. Away he goes, and the kick at goal. No, falls short and lands with Cormac, who will do the goal. The margin at the moment is 28 points. Cormac shooting for his second. Should make no mistake. Almost 19 minutes gone. He's hooked it. Oh, heaven to oh, far. Dear, dear. That really is uh, a very bad blow for Claremont. Very bad blow, that. Well, they were, they were making their charge. They were making their charge. They must be very tired. They've showed enormous courage in this quarter. That would be demoralising, a kick like that, as Holmes gets across to take the mark on the boundary line. I don't think it's really going to make any difference to the result because the Swans have done enough, I think, but if there was going to be a late charge, then that needed to go through. Langsford has caught has penalised for holding the ball. Well, I thought the ball had fallen out in the tackle. It was a very late decision, wasn't it? Very late indeed. We could have played deliberately out of bounds, which would have been a better decision. Hand has the free kick for Claremont. He gets it inside 50. Oh, O'Connell. Oh, O'Connell brings in the mark. Yeah. They're loose in the square if he can get it to them. He decides not to do that. He should kick the goal. It's exactly what he's trying to do, but he's missed two. It'll land short. Through for another point. Claremont 10-16, that's 26 scoring shots to 22. Here's the mark again. He was up early, knocked it down onto his forehead and raked it in. But chances to kick goals have gone begging and they haven't been difficult chances for Claremont. 20 minutes gone, I reckon around about 10 minutes left and there's still time if Claremont can press hard enough. Back in the direction of O'Connell but with well weighted the kick. And what a Gow beautiful kick from Penny into play. Well, chipped in at the back to take the mark. Davey in front of Higgins. Pushed. Interference. And the free kick will go the way of Davey. 20 minutes gone in the final quarter of the grand final. He's a real tyro, isn't he, number 13? Swans' Swan brilliance Davey. in the second and third quarters have put them in a strong position from where they can claim the premiership. Miles up at the back. Lewis has it oh. to Burton. It was too hot for him. Hodel ran into Narkel. They get it ahead of the play to Walker. He has genuine pace. And Narkel has genuine skill. Look at that. Oh, almost a good mark to Hutton. 
Peneza has it again. He's been resolute in defence. Man is under it. Davey from the back. Man takes the mark. It's been a great effort by both teams this season. No matter who, who emerges victorious, Claremont, with the disadvantage of having so many Eagles players, has 12, I think, on the Eagles list, as many as four or five coming back week after week. But Swans, a much underrated team throughout the season, have come out here and look like stealing the Premiership. Higgins has it now as Claremont launched what could well be their final assault. The bounce is important. Hutton gets it to the side of the pack. Cormac soccers it clear. O'Connell off the ground. It bounces the wrong way. This is not Claremont's day. They can't buy one. Cannot buy one of those freak goals. And then when Cormac got one right in front, he missed it. And that really was a killer blow. They're teasing the goals, aren't they? Minigola. Courageous. Not paid. Oh. Play on the pull. Rats left to Eaton. They're out of trouble. Eaton to the middle of the ground. Andy Holmes, one hand. Peniza slaps it wide. Narkel on a collision course. Good carry shown by Phil Narkel. Holmes comes back. But it's picked up now by Hand. Hand goes for a run. He's run through half forward and chips it over the top, but intercepting. Short circuited by Bell. Bell pulled off it by Fitzgerald. A chance for Hodel or Davey. It eludes both of them. Back comes Hand. Slaps it wide, but straight for Davey. And that could be the last uh, blast of the blast of Bugler for the Tigers. It's out wide to Hogg. To Og. David Og kicks long. Beresford going back. So is Mann. Couldn't hold it. Mann emerges out of the fence. Kicks back to the wing and finds Roland. Can they push forward this time and kick a goal? Swans He's off, Roland. Across the ground he goes. Hands on his own. This time they pump it into the half-forward line. Retzlaff went one hand. Cormac couldn't trap it. Holmes <laughs> overruns it. In goes Evans. He's held. Oh, He's pushed in the back. Push. Should have got two kicks there. Don Holmes clears it. Andy Holmes misses the mark. Narkel bats him up on the wing, though. Then he kicks it into the pocket. The lead is from Hutton. He's underneath it. Miles was with him. Back goes Beresford towards the boundary. He's under pressure from oh. Walker. Got a push. Well, that looked to be in the back also. And the boundary throw in. But those kicks there went straight to Evans. Were very noticeable. What are the free kicks through the game, Ken? 28 to Swans, 19 to Claremont. Mann and Davey. From the side, it was Higgins. Pasiri scrambles it forward. This will be a... Ooh, it could have been a bounce either way. It went the wrong way as far as Swans were concerned. And 23 and a half minutes gone. 16-7-103 to 10-17-77. Two out Brad Shine there, and that man for Siri, he's beaten Don Pike, and he's been an influential player for Swans this afternoon as Paul Burton marks and clears towards Chris Lewis. He's out in front of Lewis, but Langsford is coming to him. Lewis showed enough pace to get there. He's done pretty well. They need something special oh, here, though, tired. down in tired. the direction of, uh, of, uh, of Thorne, who's been paid the mark. Yes, Claremont have just done too much work for too little effort in this final quarter. Off he goes with a hand pass to Burton, who's a long way down from half-back. He's taken out as he kicks it quite fairly. Oh, almost a good mark there to O'Connell. In comes Cormac. He was bundled off it. Evans was also. Retzlaff gets it close to the line, and Gow gets it over the line. Well, it's been a, just a defending quarter for Swan Districts. With one ounce of luck, Claremont could have crawled back into this. Well, what a do a quarter, in fact. Claremont have kicked final, two goals. Not. Swans haven't kicked one. In fact, Swans have kicked only two points, and they're still going to win the, the grand final comfortably. Retzlaff gets it towards Og. Og gets it infield to Don Holmes. Swans with an up run in the, in the last line of defence. Oh, good and mark. And Davey takes a good mark in front of Higgins. He'll, there's 50 metres. They're penalising Peter Higgins now. He plays on, but he's got 50 metres. Refused to go back on the mark. Is yep. that the first 50 of the day, Ken? Correct. First 50 metre penalty. Yep. And I think time is running out for Clemmel. We've just gone into time on, and they really have been courageous. Swans so run there, Graham Milrose. 16 7 to 10 10-17. Swan Districts lead Clemmont into time on. Passiri back towards the goal square. Lewis might get to it. Yes, it's sat kindly for him. Now he's got to look for an option. Miles is midway between the lines. He looks down towards centre wing. Thorne is loose down there. I'm not sure that that was intended for him or Mitchell. It certainly covered some ground. Penny gets to it first. He gets around Thorne, looks back to centre half forward. Grasso is loose. Swans have all the run now. They have the game. They have the Premiership Cup in their keeping as Hodel puts it in towards centre half forward. Good mark to Higgins. Away he goes, rebounding quickly. Back to Thorne on centre wing. He needs to mark it. He's a very tired player, Peter Thorne, as he pulls that in right on the boundary line. Nothing on offer. He's called to play on. 
Bell didn't realise he was the player on the mark. Fitzgerald takes the mark at centre half forward. 26 minutes gone, 25 and a half minutes gone. Fitzgerald goes for distance, gets it inside 50. Hutton up straight through Evans' arms. Menegola comes across to Eaton. Eaton chips it up to centre wing. Davy is out in front of Higgins. Can he control it? Close to the line. It's caught. And it's out of play. See, they're playing on just their hearts alone now. Those players are very tight out there. And haven't they all given it everything they've had? Absolutely everything. 26 points to margin. Man over the top. Adel goes in hard. It squirts out to David Ogg. And another good player. Kick rebounds off Thorne. Out of bounds. And they're almost the same position. Well, they've done enough. Yes, I think the celebrations would be starting in the... Yeah, they Jordan already have there. Box. The chant goes up for the Swannies. They've done it well. Davey to Hodel. Hodel boots into the pocket. Hutton punched away by Miles. Into the pocket again. Pasiri picks it up just inside the boundary. Got a high tackle. And that'll be rewarded. Is it right half forward? Just uh, forward of that position. The Swannies. And they're everywhere today. It really has been a Swan District's house. The kick to the top of the square. Hutton from behind. Miles in front. No mark. Play on the call. Ball on the ground. In goes Berryford. It's all over. Swan District has won the 1990 Grand Final over Claremont. There's the captain, Brad Shine. He didn't play today, but his number was out there, number two, won by Brett Hutton. The flags wave proudly. It's a 26-point margin. Swan 16-7, 103. Claremont 10-17, 77. Strimple kick four. Holmes kick three. Og kick two. And Walker kick two, the main goal scorers. The Claremont, they were sparse. Tony Evans kicked two. There were a heap of singles. And that's where they fell down. Mitchell, Thorne, Cormac, Rowland, David O'Connell, Fitzgerald and Mann all kicked singles. But it's a triumphant Swan Districts. Kim Hetherington, a broad smile. And you can see just ahead of him a group of Swans players who very proudly received this cup. Players exchanging jumpers in the middle of the ground in Peter Mann and Paul Gow. And isn't that good to see? Yep. Yeah. Two uh, real outstanding players of this state football league season. Well, it's time to reflect and look back on the day. And firstly, Ken Casillas. What about the leading kick getters on the ground as the jubilation amongst the Swans players is very evident. Thanks, Trevor. Well, a wonderful team effort by Swan District. Their leading kick getter, they had two. Jeff Pasiri on a wing who lowered Don Park's colours today. Seven marks, 18 kicks and four effective hand passes. Mick Grasso, who tagged Jeremy Gard for the greater part of the game. Seven marks and 18 kicks and one effective hand pass. Retzlove, who had the job of shadowing Tony Evans, he had three marks, 16 kicks and three effective hand passes as the Swans players are jubilant in the middle of Subiaco Oval. Menegola had nine kicks. Philip Markle had 11 with five hand passes. Bell had six, plus 15 effective ruck knockouts. Langford, 10. Six to Gandini. Og had 15 with four hand passes. Don Holmes, a good defender with 13. Greg Walker, nine with five hand passes. Gow, four marks and seven kicks. Hetherington had seven. Penny, 12 with five hand passes. Brent Hutton had two kicks. Eaton had nine, and he kept John Hutton very quiet. Mick Grasso had 18. Davey, two marks and 12 kicks. Strimple, eight marks and 10 kicks. Andy Holmes had seven kicks, and Peter Hodel had four. For Claremont, Scott Rowland had 19 with nine, uh, eight hand passes in the centre. Don Pike, 10 on his wing with 12 hand passes. Mark Han, an outstanding captain's game. There's Bill Walker, the Swan District's president and former champion player. Han had seven kicks, seven marks, 26 kicks and 10 effective hand passes. So 36 disposals by the Claremont skipper on his wing. Higgins had five marks and ten kicks. David O'Connell, four and eight. Fitzgerald, four and five. Vaughan had 11 kicks only. Guard was restricted to 11. Tony Evans had 14 with seven effective hand passes. Joe Cormack, 14 with eight. Peter Mann, five marks and 13. Hutton, six. Six to Mitchell. Miles, 11. And uh, ten to Cam Lewis. And uh, Panizza, one of Claremont's better players, with four marks, 13 kicks, and seven effective hand passes to the freeze. Swan Districts, 29. Claremont, 19. Yes, thanks to Ken Casillas, who's been our statistician again this year and done a marvellous job in keeping us up to date of just what goes on through the course of a game as far as positions are concerned. Well done again this year, Ken. Thank you, Trevor. I could have felt a bit happier if the result had gone well, the other way. It's a little bit hard. 
I'm, I'm like that little gentleman there. One side of me is uh, Claremont, the other side is Swans. This side is Swans. He's beaming today. Keith Slater, you'd be very proud of the way the boys played. Yes, I, you can say that again. They were absolutely superb, and uh, they look a little uh, looked a little unsettled as co comparing them with the, the settled Claremont side. But gee, uh, John Todd, you've got to take your hat off to him. You know, he's come back. He must have been very dejected after a stint with the Eagles. He's come back and uh, straight back into state football league and has produced a premiership side and a, a magnificent performance. I'm going to just talk over those best players, and they're not necessarily in order. I could add another five or six to them, but. Uh, Swans with a magnificent team effort, there's no doubt about that. There's no doubt that they won the game in the second and third quarters where they just played so superbly. Seven goals to with the Breeze in the second quarter after holding Claremont in the first quarter and then another five goals to into the Breeze in the third quarter and really 16-5 to 8-9 at three-quarter time and they really did have the game in their keeping at that stage. Claremont, well, where did they lose the game? They lost the game in the first quarter. They had the use of the breeze. They kicked four goals eight in a very wasteful quarter and just led Swans by seven points when really they'd done enough with 12 shots to five to have a good lead at that stage. In the last quarter, Claremont pressed and pressed and pressed. They couldn't quite get there. They had many shots at goals. They need a couple of freaks. They didn't get them. And a very courageous effort by Claremont in the last quarter. Swans were supposed to be the most fit side in the game, but it didn't work out that day because uh, that way because I thought Swans were just about out on their feet in the last quarter. Claremont came home, but they just couldn't score a goal. And I thought the final nail in their coffin, coffin was when Cormac Mark right in front and failed to capitalise, and that was the end of Claremont. But uh, a great performance by Swan Districts, and uh, acknowledged now by the Governor, Sir Francis Bird is it up there, and uh, John Todd uh, leading the Swan Districts players up. And uh, what a moment for him with the acting captain, Peter Hodel. Brad Shine's up there also, I think, in the, in the background. Chairman of the Football uh, Commission uh, there, Peter Tannock. Uh, John Todd, just say a few words. John? Here's John Todd. Thanks, Peter. And ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to perhaps console with Claremont. We've been in that situation ourselves. But to Jared, what a fantastic job. And the boys and the game and the competition between the two sides this year have been magnificent. And today was no exception. I feel it was an entertaining game and it was just great to win. I'd just like to congratulate all the Swans players. John, just before you go, ladies and gentlemen, my pleasure now to introduce the Governor of Western Australia, His Excellency the Honourable Sir Francis Burt, to present the Pepsi Cup to John Todd and the Swan District's entourage up here today. This is a magnificent trophy, Peter the Pepsi Cup. Ladies a little bit crowd here. Exactly Would have been around 25,000, may have even been more. And the Pepsi Cup being presented by His Excellency the Governor, Sir Francis Burt, making his way onto the dais and congratulating the winning coach, John Todd. Peter Hodel is there wearing a Claremont jumper. Also and there's the trophy, it's a magnificent trophy. And the Pepsi, very proud sponsors of the State Football League. There's Brad Shine and Peter Hodel, captain and vice-captain of Swan Districts. And I spare a thought too for Steve Bazo, who's out there in that pack somewhere as the trophy's held high. And Bazo was very emotional when he greeted the players. And, uh, Travis Edmonds also there. Yeah, played most of the season, yeah. Travis Edmonds. Must be, uh, well, a funny feeling for them. Greg Walker embracing uh, one of the trainers. Well, didn't he come home strongly, Greg Walker? Well, Keith, he showed maturity that uh, I didn't think your football prowess that I didn't think he had. And his last half of the season was outstanding. Yep, I agree with that. And I don't think there's a better rover in the state. And he's inherited that the ability to read the ball off hands, much the same as a wicketkeeper in cricket. And I sort of thought it came through, especially today. Well, the Some thing of his roving exploits today were quite superb. And what I've liked about his games in the finals, he's been a very good defensive worker when forced to do a bit of defensive work. And you don't see too many rovers getting down to the back line and taking good marks did the way good, Greg Walker did. Did a good job in the preliminary final too. Superb. When yeah. he took Willie Rioli out. Yep. And uh, John Todd has not made it easy for him. Like he's found no. it very hard to get a game. And you must take your hat off to John Todd, you know, for his selection of players. I mean, four or five we named before this game started who have, have spent most of the season in the reserves. We talked about a goal from Andy Holmes uh, before. It's one of the best goals of the game and certainly of the season. There's Stephen Bazo you can see in the background with Travis Edmonds and a spare of thought for those two players today. But this goal from Andy Holmes has sparked off a fiery incident. We'll get Keith Slater to talk over it. That's David Ogg who goes into the forward pocket and you'll see 
men in goal are getting high. There's the beautiful rovering of Walker we've been talking about, and that was one of his better efforts, taking the ball on the full. And uh, in comes Walker again, following up his own play. Andy Holmes from deep in the right full forward pocket. And that was very well called by Trevor Jenkins, who said before Andy Holmes kicked the ball that uh, he loves nothing better than to kick that. Now, Peter Higgins went in after Holmes, after he kicked the goal. And again, it was Greg Walker who got back very quickly to make his presence felt. But a freak goal, and one of the freak goals that Swans got in the third quarter that Claremont couldn't nail in the last quarter. Yeah, just uh, looking down there and trying to work out the Simpson medalist. No, they haven't announced it. They haven't announced it yet. Presenting the medals. These are the medallions for each player. As John Todd introduces them with Peter Tannock there. He doesn't Phil Markle look terrible in a Claremont jumper? <laughs> you think Ken? <laughs> he's, had a, he's worn a few jumpers through his career, hasn't he? Brendan Retzlaff, a great player Bring in the final Rainey. series and a very good player all year. Hasn't he done well in defence? John Todd taking him from an attacking role into defence and, gee, he's uh, finished up playing for the state side. Then Gandini, like the way he uses the football, brilliant kick. And if uh, ever you want to learn how to kick, just watch Len Gandini. He's one of those series. young men who has played most of the season in the reserves. And what a final round he had. Sean Davey, well, if they give a medal for determination, I think Sean Davey most certainly gets that. Shane Strempel, we saw some of his magnificent marking today. We haven't seen enough of it during the season, but he dragged in some absolute jets in the first quarter today and played a very strong game. There's the real surprise packet of the whole final round series. Started in the last game against Claremont when he dominated, has gone right through every game dominating. Magnificent performance. Paul Gow. Well, he's the one of the young Tyros who will play a higher grade of football in the not too distant future. And there's a man, uh, Todd Melangola, who just might make it at the higher grade also. Very clever player. Danny Benny, strong and resourceful, and uh, lets people know that he's around the place, no doubt about it. Certainly does. Andy Holmes, never sighted in the first half, had a, first half, had a lot of problems with Mark Hand. Bounced back three goals in the third quarter, and again was an instrumental player. And uh, Stephen Eaton. One of the unsung heroes. Lacks uh, the bulk and the size for a fullback, but does uh, a, a quite a superb job. Brent Hutton, concussed in the preliminary final. A surprise inclusion today, wearing number two, yeah. Bradley Shines at jumper. So Bradley Shines, body not out there, but as John Todd said, his jumper out there. And uh, maybe the last game for Don Langsford, playing in his fourth premiership for Swan Districts. Sander, the medalist, Mick Grasso, and he's wearing uh, a nice shiner on his left eye. Yeah. Premiership number seven for Swans today. Two hat tricks and uh, this one on the end of it. And of course, fair thought for Claremont too. Their seventh appearance in a grand final, including 1981, and, uh, up until this year. So that's been an amazing performance by the Tigers. Do they, the have, yeah, do they have to stay out in the ground or is Jared Nisham making them? No, no, I think they, they get a, a grand final medal, don't they? Right. They get a bag of fairy floss. They're running second, don't you? It's a, Don Holmes, what a, what a decision by him to come back... Uh, what deep into the second round of football and John Todd very quick to recognize his value and uh, back into the league side. That might be the Simpson medalist announced. It's Walker. It's Greg it's Walker. Greg Walker. Well done Greg Walker. We spent a bit of time talking about it. Isn't he elated? If you can do it, Dad, say so goodnight. Well, he's been looking at his father's medals for about 25 years. Yeah, that's, a, that's a very good reward. And you can see the feeling in the man. Pretty hard to live in the shadow of your father when he's been as famous as his Billy. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for all turning up. Nothing else to say. Thanks. Well done, Greg. That's superb. And a swallow dog to finish off. And he got nine out of ten for that. His father would be very proud of that. Oh, dear. Very proud indeed. I don't think Billy's been very wrapped in the way Toddy's handled his son, but he'd have a little tear in his eye right at the moment. Yeah, that's an emotional moment for his famous father. But as I said, Keith, very hard to live in the shadow of a father of the calibre of Bill Walker. And full marks to Greg. Very hard to get a game. <laughs> but he just hasn't been able to force his way into the side. There's Don Langsford there with a the trophy. I wonder if it's the last appearance for one of Swan's all-time greats, Donnie Langsford. Well, I think he's most likely the only Swans player who has played in four premiership sides. And the really that is a feather in his cap. 82, 83, 84, and now 90 for Don Langsford. Well, it's a very proud scene as the Swan Districts players, medals, Simpson dangling medal. proudly on their chest. Well, well Mick's uh, got Sand more medals this year than a war veteran, hasn't he? He was going to go home and he didn't get picked in the state side, Mick. 
He'd had enough. Ken right. Bell there, very proud. Well, Kenny Bell. And uh, there's probably the proudest man here today, the president of Swans, Bill Walker. I doubt that there's a better administrator in Australia than that man. Great player and a great administrator. So from Subiaco Oval, we bid you a very good afternoon with the news that Swans are the Premiers, 16-7-103, the Claremont 10-17-77, the margin 26 points. I'd like to thank the ABC crew, my commentary team, Wally Foreman, Keith Slater, and also Ken Casillas. You can see this game on video if you like. Call us during the week on that number. A very good afternoon from Subiaco Oval to you all.